Sloan's. Um, so I was alone yeah. in my apartment in Toronto. Yeah. I didn't film anything at all. No. Because I was like embarrassed of my like setup because it was just yeah. like my studio was just like kitchen here, bed here, mm -hmm. like very small. And I yeah. was like, no one's gonna want to buy if they see this. But I actually regret that. We talk content. Okay. Okay. What kind of Instagram content? reels? Oh. How ridiculously. And you over biased. If you were talking to the younger self, you like oh. you had this portal where you're like, okay, here's what you're gonna do. Yeah. I'd be like, take. Uh, because you want to be able to look back or do you film it because you want to be able to share? I think both because I love looking back on that stuff. Mm. I love memories and pictures and yeah. to look back on to make me feel better and then it also motivates me but like in sharing that I then realized it inspires people okay. so that added a motivational force yeah. to like my working because I always wanted to make some type of difference mm -hmm. So now I'm just like naturally sharing what I'm doing. Why not do that to help, yeah. you know, one person? Yeah. No matter where we are, we all hold back. What do you, what do you, so I feel like that's the most under talked about thing in. I work a full time job and still need to pay the bills and save up. So that's holding her back from starting her next thing. Right. And it's, it's far more than just like paychecks. Yeah. Right? Sure. And, and people don't realize that it's like bringing people into stuff, it, it changes everything. And so. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so your intro. Joining me today is extremely talented commercial photographer who you've helped clients reach new like levels in their business through yeah. storytelling. And you get them to market what they want, basically. Yeah, so my when I built this company, it was designed on one thing. It was to actually help people understand what the core story is. Mm -hmm. So when you know your business. core, yeah. So when you know your core story, and it's not just for businesses, it's for brands too, right? Brand mm -hmm. is such a ubiquitous thing for people now. Yeah. So you can use that. So like your brand is you. Yeah. Right. Like if you take you out of XXL, it's not the same company. Yeah. Period. Oh, that's true. So you are part of that story. So telling the story of your company would be all about you. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's the interesting thing is like you maybe subconsciously realized it, or maybe you very consciously realized that. And your approach to marketing is very centric on you being there mm -hmm. and doing things and talking to your crew and building out stuff and it looks amazing because of you. And that's your story. So like branding is really key and mm -hmm. that you know your own story. Yeah, so you're technically yeah. also, you help people develop their brand almost, like pull it out of them it seems. Yeah, and pull it out of like them is really true. Yeah, well, like visually and mentally. Like a lot of people show up and be like, we just want to be better than the competition. To take like what they, they do. Say that to you. Yeah, they'll say it to me. They'll be like, we just want to take what they do and do it better. I'll be like, why? Anyone no, why can do would better. You want to be them. Yeah, let's be different. Or be right? you. Yeah, let's, let's ask why this company was successful and why it's stagnating now. Right? Like, that's a big thing too. Because yeah. if it's stagnating, it might just be the end of the market. Like, if you're selling, you know, cars and everyone has a car, your market yeah. will slow down. Yeah, why would you want to sell the same car? Exactly. You have a couple of, um, and you get into marketing at that point. So you get like, Emotional marketing, right? Which is where 99% of where I work is, is in emotional marketing. It's like figure out what emotions drive the sale or what emotions drive the engagement of that audience, right? So it's kind of a learned over the years, mm -hmm. but it's more about understanding people than photographing, right? So like, yeah. I, yeah, I use photography and videography to do what I need to do to solve that problem. Yeah. But for the most part, most people come to me with a problem. They just don't know that problem yet. Like 99% of the time, they'll be like, we just want more sales. Yeah. I'm like, but like, why? Okay, if you want more sales, want why do you need more clients for that? Marketing advisor too, yeah. like not just. Well, just understanding what makes something work, yeah. right? And like, I'm a big proponent of people actually building something. And so seeing like companies like yours where it's growing because you put the effort in, because it's, it, this, this is not a big box store. Mm -hmm. This is so cool. I love seeing this. Like this, I want to see a thousand similar kind of like ideas mm -hmm. all working together, right? So like yeah. XXL and all these other companies that are popping up that are not Amazon, that are not these large corporates. That's, what so that's like your goals of your That's business. my goal, yeah. Oh, I just okay. want to see is like people drive their dreams forwards. Yeah. I always tell my kids, I'm like, if you're not working on your dream, you're working on someone else's. Yeah. That's true. But how did you start that? How did I start that journey? Yeah. I started, um, as all good stories do, with the bottom of the at the bottom of the rungs. So I kind of I did photography for years. I was doing baby photography, children's photography, 
family and weddings. And I've opened I can't up. Can't picture you shooting like a family or wedding Dude. right now. <laughs> no, no, not anymore. No, yeah. you you know me now. But back yeah. in the day, that was me. I just like I started off. If we go right back to begin, back to the film days, mm -hmm. I was out photographing sled dogs because oh, when I moved fine. to Canada, I thought that everybody sled dog. So I learned how to do dog sledding. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but cool. I did that, and then I got into weddings mm -hmm. because I needed to pay for this camera that I just purchased. Yeah. which was like 300 bucks, I needed to pay for that. And so I started learning how to do it. Oh, that's and awesome. that's kind of how I started. Um, I went through, I want to say like eight years of doing that and ended up getting to the point where I had enough. And so I was ready to sell the gear and I was oh. out and I was done. I'm like, I, I can't stand this, uh, you know. Yeah, that's the, good that you like left. Yeah. Some people don't. Don't, They're exactly, yeah. Well, I ended up getting a job. Oh. Which, you know, jobs are hard for me. Because, like, being able to control your own time to not, but having yeah. this consistent paycheck is kind of like a trap. Right? Yeah. So you kind of sit there and you're comfortable, but it's not what you want to do. And there's something in entrepreneurs and something in, like, people who actually want to go out there and do it. You can't contain it for long. You can, yeah. you can squish it down as much as you like, but at the point where it gets to that, and for me it was, you know, just understanding who I was. Right? And my wife said to me, she's like, listen, I'd rather be poor and you do what you love than, Aww. you know, be, you know, doing what you're doing right now. So yeah. you need to make that choice. Mm -hmm. And so it was shortly after my mentor died. He was uh, a really amazing photographer. And I turned around and said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to go out there, but I'm going to do it right. Yeah. And this time I'm going to learn business. I have to learn what makes me tick. Like, what do I like about photography? Yeah. And I started out really enjoying advertising stuff. Like, oh. you know, like print advertising don't really read magazines anymore but there used to be mm -hmm. these beautiful print ads yeah that i just fall in love with my how do they make those and so i started going down that route and then that led me to commercial photography oh, cool. which is kind of like the baby step to advertising work yeah so and that's kind of where i just enjoy so i get to tell people stories mm -hmm. i get to help grow and i get to see them grow and then yeah. if i've done a good job they just go out there and just it just works yeah right and then they come back and like okay let's do that again you know, and that's cool. Yeah. So, and that's kind of my whole story really is just understanding who I was mm -hmm. before I could actually start pushing forwards and then helping people understand who they were. It's from that getting so distraught and like just leaving photography yeah. that I learned like there was that story that I was not telling and that was really hard. But if I told it in the right way and did the right business about it, then it would actually make sense. Like you kind of took what you did to yourself and now you're sharing that to others. Yeah, like just reapplying. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of why when I see like your, your video and stuff it's fascinating to me because you have that confidence to do it on camera when i don't when i sit there i mean like we're here on camera now we've flipped the screen so people can't see us yeah right and but for me that's a really hard thing to actually do and i think it's a generational gap too mm -hmm. it's like we weren't like you know these were new did not exist yeah exactly yeah, yeah. this was not something webcams that, or anything no exactly yeah so yeah. like for me to record myself i'd have to get a camera like this hold it out do the old casey neistat kind of thing right like now, you can, anyone with a cell phone, anyone with a cell phone can create content. Yeah, and I actually that's record powerful. on my phone sometimes. It's great. Yeah. Honestly, like this thing does amazing stuff. Yeah, like, like I have like the cinematic setting yeah. on the phone. And yeah. It's so good. And it's beautiful, right? Yeah. Like I was shocked. The best camera is the one that's on you. Yeah. Right. So like, I if know. you have like a you know forty thousand dollar camera, great. If it's not on you, it's useless. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I realized that the last couple of days. I was like, I need to record this, and then it's just on my phone, but it still looks yeah. good. But recording it on your phone is better than not having it recorded. Yeah. Right. And so telling that story for me when I was like, for me is kind of doing that. You know, it's not telling to a camera, and like I think I'm okay with that. Like I know you and I had that conversation about like maybe I should start doing this, mm -hmm. and I'm doing yeah, that do with my sculpting. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely gonna put a pin in that one, but. That was for me, it was like making it simple versus actually making it so that it would build up and build up to be something. I want to touch base again, just share how we met. Yeah. So we were filming a campaign for Choose Belleville mm -hmm. and you were one of the videographers. Yep. And then we actually, towards the end, we were just getting more footage. Yep. And then you saw my YouTube plaque and then started asking me questions about it. Yeah. And you said you were not nervous, but you've always wanted to make this one channel teaching specific mm -hmm. skills that you have which are yeah. amazing that people yeah. would definitely want to know but you wanted to make them perfect yeah and then in my mind i was like what the heck this guy knows exactly what to do like how to film mm -hmm. you would know what exactly to say and how to edit it perfectly yep. but the thing holding you back was you want to make it perfect obviously because mm -hmm. you want to execute it well yeah. that was a really difficult like i think that conversation actually sparked something in my brain because i was like i teach people this yeah. i'm like done is better than perfect yes Wait, which 
sounds horrible. But, but nothing can ever be perfect. Exactly. But it can get better yeah. after you make the first one. And you're not gonna be good at the gate. That's yeah, the no. hard part. And my like first video, the audio was it terrible? Like, yeah, it was on my phone, and at Amazing. one point, like, the audio went in the red when I was editing, but I didn't notice. Did it saturate? I didn't, like, when I was editing on iMovie, mm. I didn't, like, I didn't think that was bad, so I just uploaded it, and then I watched it later after yeah. views are up, and then one part just goes, like, because it's so loud. The, the audio caps, so basically, like, if you think of it like a, like a sinuso, yeah. like, wave, yeah. it caps at the top. I and that's that, your saturation. Like four videos later. Yeah. But then that video was when I filmed this tour in my basement of like mm -hmm. the new studio. We just renovated the basement. Yep. And that video actually kind of not launched my YouTube career or whatever, yeah. but it got one day just overnight so many views and mm -hmm. then so many people came to my channel and that's like literally that's how it all started from yeah. that and awful yeah. video that well, I didn't make perfect. And that's the thing, right? It's like you sat there and you didn't take, you just did it. Yes. Right? And I feel like there's there's a bravery in that and a courage that most people don't have. I was pretty honest. nervous, but I did have time building up to it by like mm -hmm. sharing on my Instagram story, like of me. Yeah. But at the start, I was nervous too. Like I yeah. was sending it to my cousins and stuff. And I was like, do I sound normal? I feel so scripted. And mm. then with practice, that got easier. How important do you feel it is? for you to be present in your brand. Oh, See, I now I'm like, like switching, I'm like throwing questions at you, sorry. Yeah, no, that's uh, good. Um, I feel like it's really important. Like, so I actually just got a house the yeah. last week. I know. That's so cool. Doing renovations, and then I realized I was being pulled so many directions, mm -hmm. and I didn't feel good about it because I wasn't being present for my team. Yeah. They mm -hmm. didn't notice I was like in my mind going crazy. You know, like, and like, and yeah. it's, it's, it's hard because especially when you build something, you want to control all assets, uh, like yeah. aspects of it. But then at the same time, you've got to get to the point where you can actually say, you know what? I'm not needed in this part. Like yeah. my Delicate. impact is so low, yeah. right? And that's the, um, there's a book, The 4-Hour Workweek, I always recommend to people. And that's one oh. of the things he teaches yeah. is like learn to see what needs to be done mm -hmm. and what you don't need to be doing. Yeah. You know, and that if you're not doing it, then you're doing something that's more important than doing that. Yeah. Right? Like don't just, you know, hire someone to do this and then sit there and read the newspaper. Yeah. Or read the you know, whatever. Yeah. Just go ahead and, you know, use that time wisely. So Yeah, I realized how much I actually really care about being here. Mm -hmm. But I also since we met, I hired yeah. one new person full time. Awesome. And they actually do a lot of design work and like social media aspect and yeah. like packaging. They do the whole packaging and yeah. printing the labels, which no one else has ever printed off the shipping labels. Cause yeah. she, she had to like design this booklet based on my instructions because okay. it's so specific for yeah. like So she has like, a, she out. made you a process manual basically? Yeah, that I trained her on. And then Amazing. she made it so then like the future person we could train. Yeah, because you're kind of removing yourself from those little parts of the business that can run by themselves yes. with the right training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's a, that's a business right there. Mm -hmm. Cause I also read, I've been reading books too. And then I heard some podcasts say some businesses do flop because the business owner doesn't focus on what's important. Mm -hmm. And then I realized what's excelling XXL is mm -hmm. YouTube yep. and all of our content yeah. that I'm creating. Yeah. That's like reaching more people. Should we talk content? Okay. Okay. What kind of Instagram content? reels. Oh, how ridiculously and YouTube over biased. Shorts. YouTube Shorts as well. Okay. Or what were you saying over? Over biased right now. Like basically, okay. I'll give you. I'll give you some backstory to this. So okay. I've been putting out like. Like over biased, like bad. Like no, no, towards? like no. They're very good towards them, right? So like, there's oh. a lot of eyes on them versus your usual, right? So you're, and it's kind of difficult because rather than be smart about it, they've got like three different sections in Instagram, right? You have your kind of feed, mm -hmm. you have your stories. I never click on the, the real reels. section. You don't. Never. Which is funny because most people do. Yeah. And the reason I know this is because with the insights, one of my biggest hitting videos on my feed was mm -hmm. one of the Choose Belvilles. Actually, I think it's either yours or, um, oh, it might've been the Boiler Rooms, where oh. basically they, we had like 250 views, mm -hmm. which for me is, is quite good. I'm like, okay, that's awesome. That's yeah. great. You know, as a, as a, I would call myself a micro creator because like I don't consistently put out there and we're going to change that, but confidence and, and you know, talking and to scheduling. you. scheduling. Scheduling. Yeah. It's got to be easy. And I, I'm putting put it in that one because I got to come back to that because that's really important. Yeah, I have um, good advice for how to schedule. Yeah. I post all the time. You do. Everywhere. And that's and that's daunting. As someone who follows it, I'm like, just flipping the table. Like, she's posting again. Like, how? <laughs> like, where does she have this time? She runs a business. She has a house. Like, yeah. that's, and it's not supposed to feel that way. And like, it doesn't like 
jog me that way. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm saying? It's like you sit there and it's like, yeah. how do you do that? It just looks that way, but in preparation and just always kind of having content, which you have tons of content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. And that, we're just plan. we're just not using it. Mm -hmm. We're actually really bad. And like everything I tell my clients I'm not doing, oh. which I'm going to be changing this year and trying to make a act, like an actual active effort, which is well, why we're going to go. Do, talk. And then you just seem to stop maybe. Kind of not to, not to the extent that I should have done it. Right. So like, it, and I think it's personally, I'm a very private person. So yeah. I don't like to share my family on, on Instagram. I don't like to share my family on, on Facebook. Like, in fact, like yeah. the only photos I have are pretty much on my phone and in the house. Like that's, that's just fair. me. Right? And I'm that kind of person. So like being, in front of the camera and doing all that is a very big step for me. I feel like there's different variants that kind of play into it too. You know, ranging from like self-confidence to just mm -hmm. kind of like that imposter syndrome that you get in your brain yeah. where you're like, I'm not good enough. No one's going to care. The like Instagram. Who will watch this type thing. Yeah, who will watch it? And if they're going to watch it, they're going to watch it just to make fun of me. And then, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things like that. So. I thought about that too. I also want to put a pin in. <laughs> We've got so many pins here. <laughs> I know. We need to write them down. Put a pin in um, the topic of who's going to watch this. Yeah. So I think with Instagram, with content, if we talk just we're just talking pure oh, yeah, like meat and bones that. there and then we'll jump over to yours yeah the reels have way more eyes on them like compared to posts. significantly like yeah. my and biggest immediately yeah immediately so and my, then they grow sometimes dude. like so, some hit a million like months later or yeah something like that. so i did a video for choose belleville posted it to the feed got like 250 views was super happy i'm like okay i think it's like four likes which told me one thing everyone's watching you but not everybody likes you yeah, like, they're just like scrolling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, like the likes cannot be a, a metric anymore. I think people mm -hmm. are just sick and tired of hitting like and like, oh, that's cool. And they keep going. Yeah. So just rely and on the watches. The like button's like all the way up here when you're scrolling just like this. I think so. Yeah, I think that's if they, yeah, that's actually a good UIX thing. If they move the uh, like button to the right instead of the share, that actually be smarter. Um, so there's that. My biggest reel to date was I was walking through, um, if you go up north to Vanderwater, Mm -hmm. There's like a, like a big open area near the scout camp there where it's just pure snow. Oh, it's cool. gorgeous. And so we did some snowshoeing for it. And it's literally of a video which I took with relevant music. So it's very relevant because I kind of scroll through the reels, find out what music people like to use yeah. and then use that. Yeah, and that's so fun to pick. It's so much fun to pick. And it's like, oh crap, I don't have to like search for hours because it's like, they'll just basically curate it for you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to like worry about... Um... Copyright. Yes, <laughs> yeah, oh my CMAs, God. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I did that. I threw that on and it took me five minutes like at most to yeah, do like, like post. Thoughtless post. Thoughtless post was like, hey, you but know. Like a fun thoughtless yeah, post. Yeah, exactly. And that post now has, and like it's already, last time I checked it was like 2100. I checked this morning, it's 26 hundred views oh my gosh. which is tenfold what we and get you on like the feed. almost weren't even gonna post it dude that's i have one happens. video that spent two days mm -hmm. and this one took like five minutes yeah so like disproportionate amount of like eyes on that versus that which taught me a couple of things a reel should be very very um real <laughs> real reels yeah. um <laughs> like none of this curated stuff mm -hmm. in fact i find the curated stuff seem to be less interesting to me when i'm flicking through the moment it looks high quality yeah i actually keep flicking even faster on my app is an ad like that's the first thing that comes in my mind so i'm like teaching clients i'm like if you're going to do reels don't use me or if you're going to use my stuff be very smart about it have something yeah. that's very kind of punchy and quick because you haven't like, found your high quality real exactly. like, gem yet yeah exactly it could yeah. hit eventually. it could hit and i think it will yeah like i've seen cycles right so uh, instagram went from being like super kind of like high-end food photos for the rich yeah. to now we're in you know share dog photos and all the rest of what goes on yeah there. and so, like blurry photos blurry really photos popular. yeah yeah yeah, which is crazy because mm -hmm. like that's one thing we stay away from, right? It's like yeah. we focus on that. Like I've done some art projects where I've had like blur and stuff, and then mm -hmm. I look back like five years from now and just go, that looks like shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that's uh, kind of like the the content that I really want to talk about is like there's I feel like there's so many pipelines you can get into now, right? You've got your Instagram pipeline, you've got your TikTok, YouTube Shorts, YouTube, YouTube Shorts. Yeah, YouTube right? Shorts are crazy. Have you heard of them? So I've heard of them, but I don't understand them. So I always thought they were like blog posts, mm -mm. but they're not. They're literally like Instagram reels. Like they are okay. posted in the same dimensions. Yeah. So you've got like your upright versus yep. your, your... And it can only be 60 seconds long. 60 seconds long. Yeah. So why why bother with them then? So they actually... So I posted a couple YouTube shorts just because like I already have the content that I'm posting yep. for TikTok and Instagram because yep. I cross post everywhere yeah because may as well and how do you do that do you do do you have a program that you do that or do you actually manually cross post 
So for TikTok, I manually post, okay. but you can make a draft to okay. save it later. Mm. So I go into my TikTok and I have maybe 264 drafts probably or more. Cause I, when I make a video, I instantly put it in there and then do the little caption. And I save it for later mm, okay. cause I don't want to lose that moment. And like, if I go back later, it's like a chore to like make yeah. that video. Cause yeah. I have like probably hundreds that I haven't made. Is there different media to put on different medias? Do you feel like, can you just uh, put the same media across the, oh, all, all of the platforms? I usually do, okay. just for my time's sake. Yeah, because that's, that's we go back to the time and the ease, right? Mm -hmm. Like those two pins can go together, actually. Yeah. It's like making it easy is going to make it so you'll continue to do it, right? So yeah. like I get up, you know, I drink a glass of water, I go for a run mm -hmm. like five times a week. Right, and when You're I'm into the habit, I have a treadmill. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm, lucky. I'm a wimp. Um, no, I hate cold. So, but that was because I made it easy, right? Yeah. Like if I didn't have the treadmill, I wouldn't run in the morning, well, yeah. right? And like after my ankle injury, so I injured myself um, just over a year ago now um, at the climbing gym actually. Oh. And, um, and basically it took me a while to get my ankle back to shape. Mm -hmm. And so rather than go back to climbing, I wanted to keep the running because the running for me was, that was like my moving meditation. Yeah. So it's like where you could get out and like, and, and you know, this is like your brain gets so, stacked with things throughout the day. Yeah, it clears your mind. It, it gives you, you something like to clear your mind. Set yeah, and day. I find the days that I don't run and the days that I don't take that seriously, you feel like fall muggy. apart. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I always say a, a day without a, a, you know, a bad day is a, a day without a run, right? And it's like, it's just, you need that, you know? And I know like when I get really emotionally charged, I'll go for a run, right? Yeah. And that helps, so. But yeah, so like keeping it simple, right, is going to be key to building any media outlay. Yeah, right? at first, at least, to yeah. start, so then you're not overwhelmed. Yeah, because I know that like Phil wants to do like laser cutting videos on YouTube. Right? Which would be he, cool. Which he thought would be really cool, and he had all these ideas, but he ended up not doing any laser cutting because the time he'd spend thinking and trying to figure out the story and to do that. Yeah. And I said to Mike, just document. Don't yeah. don't try to make it into something. Just document. Or just right? do a little planning each day. Yeah. To like plan the entire thing. So walk me through how you do this, right? Because you're to you're like a, a master at this something. now. Yeah. So like walk me through how you would do your like a post. Okay. So let's say um, so next week we have a big launch coming up. Okay. So we're launching actually the suede scrunchies. Is that the uh, one? The Is plaids. One? The plaids, there we go. So yeah. there's 32 scrunchies. There's also these ones. And then all of our clothes. So that wasn't there last time. Those are all of our clothes so that awesome. are launching new. So sweaters, sweat shorts, t-shirts. Yeah, and then they're set so they match. Okay. So we're launching those on the Saturday. And okay. whenever we launch, we actually sit here and we film because at 12 p.m. is when I unlock the password on site. And then mm. usually there's people wait, like maybe 200 people waiting to get in. Wow. I know, and then sometimes the site, there's 300 people at a time shopping. Yep. So we actually put that counter here. Because that counter is actually live, right? Yeah. So this is a Shopify counter you can't see on the on the podcast here, but there's actually a Shopify counter that's on a sh on a shelf basically, mm -hmm. and and it kind and of it like flips flips every time there's a sale. Yeah. So during like Black Friday, mm -hmm. like that thing went nuts. Yeah, it just keeps going. Did it actually stress you out how fast uh, it was going? No, it just it doesn't speed up, but it just okay. keeps going. It just keeps going. Yeah. Was that a little stressful knowing that uh, all of this kind of deluge of like orders, like orders? were coming in? Yeah. Um, no, I'm kind of used to it because like yeah. it gradually grew. Like my Fair phone enough. also makes like this cha-ching noise, like the infamous yep. Shopify yeah, cha-ching exactly, noise. Yeah. So it kind of like grows with you and it's kind of like, like a happy sound. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't stress. It's true, yeah, because like if you hear it, you're like, sweet, someone's purchased something. Then yeah. I can go ahead and put the orders together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we would set up here and then we're filming here and sometimes I also film on my phone. Yep. And then the next day or that following night, I'll quickly edit it. I have like this app called InShot and okay. you can edit things and just drag and like do little effects and stuff. And okay. then I'll quickly upload it to TikTok. Maybe okay. pick the sound, maybe not. Yep. And then if I'm too busy to put a caption, at least the video is there for me to pick a draft later. And so you save the draft. So in TikTok, you're not really focused on, because I know that I ashamedly just got into TikTok. We're talking like That's okay. three weeks. Weeks. It's better like, than not getting into it. Yeah, like I haven't even thought about Snapchat, which, you know. I, oh yeah, I deleted Snapchat. Yeah, see a lot of people, like I feel like TikTok crushed Snapchat. Yeah. And so I was just like, when there was Snap, uh, Snapchat came out and then TikTok came out, I was kind of confused because TikTok originally, you, mm -hmm. you may remember it, is, it was Dances. a dance platform. Yeah. Yes, so like it really didn't interest me. And then mm -hmm. they changed their name to TikTok and then basically started duplicating elements from Instagram and from Snapchat. And they kind of made this, I would argue, probably a better platform yeah. for creators mm -hmm. than Instagram. Yeah. Right? Because it hasn't got that marketing element as yeah, obnoxiously. The it, yeah. Instagram feels very fake now. Mm -hmm. feels like it's 
Instagram feels like um, people copying TikTok. Yeah, kind that's what of. it feels like. And so, yeah. kind of, like, I go for TikTok, and then like I'll do like two minutes of Instagram because I'm just like, okay, this this is just people trying to TikTok but not learning how to TikTok. Yeah. Right. And it's like it's like the oh, what's that? Uh, Steve Buscemi with the, uh, the baseball cap and the and this a skateboard over his shoulder where he's like, hello, fellow cool kids. You know, like that kind of feel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you post to TikTok, and then I'll also just quickly upload it to Instagram. Okay. But then if because it when TikTok you have to use specific sound sometimes so mm -hmm. then i can't save that sound if i didn't post it yet okay. onto instagram yeah so i'll once i post the tiktok the tiktok video saves as yep. itself but then it has a watermark on it but okay. i don't care because yeah. it says my name yeah um so then i will upload that as a draft into instagram instagram okay but with youtube shorts i just upload a youtube short whenever i feel like it really um, so there's no you, schedule there's no or... drafts for that okay but for my youtube like actual content we post every tuesday at 9 a.m yeah and i think i have videos scheduled up and until end of March. So your pre-scheduling is really important because yes, or I'll it removes that stress, right? Yes. Yeah. Because I like to be really over prepared and yeah. just like be, then I can be present at work yeah. and then focus on other things instead of being like, oh, I got to rush to make so, this YouTube video. So because you're because you're kind of like you're not being reactionary with your media, but at the Sometimes. same time you are. Yeah. Right. Which is kind of an interesting combo because like for me, like we're very not reactionary, mm -hmm. right? It's like we go along and so like you know the projects that come in, we'll say okay. You were with let's the Choose with Belleville. The, you think that was reactionary? Well, my video was only like a couple weeks after sure there's mums of planning before that like that's sure. literally like that's so like the towards the actual filming towards the actual stuff. filming yeah. yeah so like the filming and all that is planned right so we know the schedule we knew that the schedule launch was going to be tight right and so we knew that we had to shoot and then basically the platform for where we put the videos is already set it's already have like that template almost yeah so i'm bringing in your your footage and i'm going okay done right get that out for approval approved comes back color grade and ship so that part can take a day like yeah. that can be really quick. It's the planning before. So like we knew that um, we wanted to have a very short form story. We didn't want to have like everything up to then for businesses and for local kind of like business awareness mm -hmm. was like two minute long videos. Yeah. And I'm just like, no one cares. No, no one that. wants to watch that. Like give them 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. And so when we first put out the pitch to people, people were like, no, like you want, you want me to say hello, my name is, and then basically tell them yeah, one thing that. and then exfil, that's it. I'm like, that's all you need. Yeah. They're like, no, 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 but I want to tell them about how, you know, we make the best water bottles in the world. I'm like, then tell them that, but do it succinctly. Yeah. Right? And so we had, like, the, our first shoot, the first day we had one guy had a two-minute audio. Oh. And I literally had to cut it and, like, lost 90% of what he said. Yeah. Right? The problem is, is he had had very long-winded ways of saying things, so we end up chop, chop, chop. So, and that's kind I of... like being super quick. Yeah. So we kind of learned from that and built out, and then... By the time we got to you, we're like, you're season two, basically, of it, mm -hmm. is we're already at go. We're in season three now yeah. and shooting that stuff. And it's just, it's very simple looking, but we make it simple, yeah. right? So that's kind of like that preparation. So that's why when I see your stuff, I see the preparation there. Because mm -hmm. so I'm like, she's ready because she knows that she's going to be here. She's going to be doing this. And yeah. she already, in your brain, you already know that story you're telling. Mm -hmm. But right? also based on practice, because maybe this is maybe like the 10th launch or something. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. How was your first launch? Um, so I was alone yeah. in my apartment in toronto yeah i didn't film anything at all no because i was like embarrassed of my like setup because it was just yeah. like my studio was just like kitchen here bed here mm -hmm. like very small and i yeah. was like no one's gonna want to buy if they see this but i actually regret that like not documenting at all okay so why do you regret it because i really wish i could look back on it to compare mm. and to like learn from that yeah. and like i was scared people like i was scared of what they would think the like, judgment right i was like they won't like these scrunchies if they see where they're made in my house like why yeah. would they buy that yeah but people actually like authenticity which right. i've learned after yeah. like slowly being more comfortable and then yeah. showing my messy space yeah like they i think that's for me is like when you talk about mess it's funny because you're like oh we renovated the basement and then we started filming and i'm just like that's the one thing i I'm like looking at renovating the, the basement this summer and I'm like when it's done because most of my business gets run from my basement yeah right because like we've done studios before mm -hmm. and it's really hard to justify a studio without consistent studio work and most of yeah. my stuff is on location yeah so we basically do that I would love to have a studio but I don't think it would be a studio in the in the purest sense yeah I think most it. of the time I'd be out of the studio so it'd have to be some kind of office space yeah more than anything so because like most of the time is spent dealing with creatives and building out stuff that we're going to do mm -hmm. and then going on set and shooting it. yeah so i feel like that for me that holds me back as i sit there and i look at my basement which we moved in uh like 2019 yeah and then i just went straight to work and i put the stuff out and then went and started work mm -hmm. 
right? And it's really hard to stop work, renovate. I know, it's so hard. And then go back to it, it's like. It's hard to stop work at all. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so I can see that reticence but to do that. But I did regret it. So if you yeah. documented it, you could just keep it for yourself. Yeah. Because like if I thought that way, I would have been like, okay, I'll keep it for myself. So how would you document it? Would you document simply with a phone and just kind of uh, yeah, I TikTok just... level it? Or would you do like. Like back then? Or now? Yeah, now. So if you were talking to the younger self, you like oh. you had this portal where you're like, okay, here's what you're gonna do. Yeah. Right. I'd be like, put the camera um, here and describe what you're doing. Just film what you're doing. And like, I remember I was taking photos like against my kitchen wall, but like yep. moved all the stuff out of the way because like yep. other stuff was in the way. And I used this like throw pillow on the ground, and I would have to like edit it out because yep. you could see the floor. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, take time lapses of just you. Like it mm -hmm. won't interrupt your time. It won't take away from what you're doing because no. I was doing it all alone. Mm -hmm. And then I would have had so much footage to look yeah. back on and be like, this is how I started. And then this is how could I show other people. Yeah. They is, it do it. is it important for you or is it important to show others how it became? Like, which is more important for you? Like, do you film it uh, because you want to be able to look back or do you film it because you want to be able to share? I think both because I love looking back on that stuff. Mm. I love memories and pictures and yeah. to look back on to make me feel better. And then it also motivates me. But like in sharing that, I then realized it inspires people. Okay. So that added a motivational force. Yeah. to like my working because I always wanted to make some type of difference. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just like naturally sharing what I'm doing. Why not do that to help, yeah. you know, one person? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because like, I think for me, when I look at it, it's like, who am I doing it for, mm -hmm. right? Because you do think sometimes like, who's going to watch this? Well, and Which you, is one of our pins. I think I think Europeans are, are brought up being really cognizant of the fact that there are a lot of people that you know, have it worse. Yeah. Right? And so you're always very much like, you know, no bragging. You're not allowed to brag. You're not yes. allowed to be proud of yourself. I want to talk about that too. No bragging. Yeah, no bragging, no videos, pride. I'm scared to post sometimes. Is it bragging or is it just pride? And if it's pride, is it going to be the fall of you? <laughs> the, the double up, right? So yeah. I think like posting something because you're proud of it means that it could be a very beneficial thing to someone moving forwards. Mm -hmm. like, like I have creatives that I've helped grow mm -hmm. that I haven't documented it and I really regret it. Like I have, yeah. you know, like five guys I can think of where I've seen their journey mm -hmm. and them just turn around and say, hey, I did what you said to me and the client said yes. And they're just like, that's like double what I usually charge. I'm yeah. like, yeah, but that's what it costs to do this. Yeah. Right? Like you cannot ignore the costs of this, right? Just because you want to do it doesn't mean the cost's not there. Yeah. In fact, like, they're going to rely on the fact. know your value. Well, and we've got to be honest, like the client's job when they get there is to make sure they pay the least amount of money possible mm -hmm. for the service that you're trying to render. Yeah. Your job is to say, look, we're going to do this, 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 this is what it costs, mm -hmm. right? Like there's no changing that cost. And like yeah. you can go back and forth and like you get into the you know minutiae of it. But the reality is, is there's a, a cost to doing these things, yeah. whether it be time, whether it be like experience. actual assets or experience. Yeah. Experience is the most undervalued oh God, cost yeah. in the world. Because I used to be a freelancer graphic designer and yep. it was like a struggle to like negotiate prices. That mm -hmm. was like the yep. most stressful thing. Yep. And I'm so glad I'm out of that. Yep. And it was that's so a fun. daily for, for my, yeah. my uh, comrades. <laughs> like yeah. they're just like they do it every day and it's like teaching them how to do it is really key. Yeah, because that's not even taught in learning your skill, like to do the job. There's a few guys that actually vocally talk about it on TikTok and stuff. And I feel like I'm going to join those ranks because like yeah. this, they're, they're not telling lies. They're telling the truth and they're getting so much kickback from other creatives. Like, well, you can't do that. You can't charge that. You can't, you know, I had one guy I was talking to yesterday when I was in Viztec and he's just like, well, you know, you know business is so hard right now. And I'm like, no, it's like it's there. You just got to look for it and find it and yeah, understand like seek your opportunities, but also know your niche. Know Know what you're good at and build yeah. upon that and so he's like wow it's really hard to find work in toronto and i'm like what? i'm in belleville yeah right and toronto like i was like the hub yeah and he he's complaining that there's no work in toronto and i'm like there is you just don't see it mm -hmm. well you're not making the right connections to understand it or you might just be pricing yourself so low that the people that are interested in you won't even look at you yeah or you're just dwelling on there being no jobs that you're not even taking action mindset yeah yeah so yeah so the what was the pin there being braggy being braggy yeah so even my like sales if we have i was nervous yep. to post launch days and i'm like they're gonna think we're getting too many sales and then mm -hmm. people won't want to buy from us yeah and then most recently the house video yeah. i was really scared to post that at all i was mm -hmm. like i'm gonna keep it to myself like i filmed everything no matter what because i wanted to look back on it did you film the renos? Um, yeah. That's gonna be cool. Are you showing the renos right now or? Um, so all the floors are out and the walls okay. are taken. So I did film and edit episode two already. Nice. 
That's cool. And yeah. then I think episode three will be like when the floors go in and then the kitchen goes in and okay. the walls and stuff are up. Do you consume media? Consume. Hmm. Like look yeah. online a lot. Yeah. But like I try not to because then okay. I get lost. Yeah. But I do still because Interesting. it's fun. Yeah. I, 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 so I have, um, and it's kind of like a self-imposed rule really where it's like do five minutes. Five oh. minutes on TikTok, five minutes on Instagram That's and then good. I'm off. Yeah. That's it. That's all I consume. And so I consume Netflix. Yeah. I, I feel like that doesn't count as like media, media. YouTube and, and Netflix are kind of put in the same kind of boat now because like yeah. YouTube, where before it was just like, you know, someone teaching you how to turn on your router. Yeah. Now it's is like very life quickly become, Yeah. Stuff. It's been amazing. And like mm -hmm. you can find some really interesting things on Netflix and, and or in YouTube. In fact, I find myself gravitating to YouTube more mm -hmm. than Netflix now because the content in it is real and it's more really relevant. Yeah. It's fun to watch. Yeah. So yeah. the, yeah, with the renovations and the, and the bragging and the stuff, I feel like if you show the process, if you show from the start to the finish, yeah. it's not bragging. Yeah. Right? Like if we take someone, who, uh, let me find, oh, you know Gary Vee, right? I think so. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Well, is he older? He is an older guy. He's about, he's a little older than me. Okay. Yeah, so he basically runs, um, I think it's V Media now. Okay. But back in the day, when the internet was young, there was like mm -hmm. a thing called Re Revision 3. Oh, okay. And Kevin Rose's platform, I think it's Alex, I can't remember the other guy's name, but it was like the early, early days of YouTube. Like yeah. it was, was pre-YouTube. Yeah. And so they basically made a platform where you could go and watch videos mm -hmm. on tech subjects, on movies, and then Gary Vee was doing a wine library. So he basically did a thing called Wine TV. Oh, cool. And he would, you know, basically open up a bottle, talk about it, and that's what he would do because his parents ran a winery, mm -hmm. like a wine distribution center, and he wanted to grow the content. And so he did this for years and then got well known and then went to YouTube. And then he realized during that time that he really liked investing. Mm -hmm. So then he started talking about investments and then it was all about investments. And now he's wow. kind of rotated. He is like the pro go out and do what you want to love kind of guy, right? So he's yeah. like, um, Tony Robbins or anything like that. He's a very okay. motivational, explosively happy person, right? And mm -hmm. like, he is genuine about it. But if you watch him for the very first time now, you'd be like, that guy brags like shit. Like he's oh. all the time braggy. Yeah. But it's not if you followed him and you know him and you understand yeah. it. So there are going to be people that come and see your content and go, she's bragging. Yeah. Like right? I've come to terms that not everyone's going to like it. That's a hard one, fine. isn't it? It was hard, but then I was like, but there are people who will like it and you can't please everyone. Like even in no. your real life, yeah. there's going to be people that don't like you. Mm -hmm. So just do what you like. I feel like people get resentful of people who do what they love Yeah. because they get stuck and whether it's their own And they things. like hold you to an expectation almost. Yeah. But yeah. like you don't owe them nope. and you didn't do anything to them. No, I've had a lot of friends who told me I was crazy. So when oh, really? I started up my business as a commercial photographer, I kind of went around and talked to photographers locally and said, well, what do you charge and all this and figure out where the market is. Yeah. And it was about 500 to 700 a day when I was going up there. And yeah. so I was like, okay. And so the first thing I did was I doubled the top guy, which everyone's oh. just like, you're stupid. Like, yeah. why would you double the top guy? And I'm like, well, because I want to define myself as someone who is taking this very seriously. And, yeah. you know, and my goal isn't to work locally, is to work out of area, it's to work in Toronto, work in Ottawa and build outwards. Little did I know that it would end up being a thing that would define me locally. Is they're like, okay, you need, you know, this, you're going to spend a lot, but Ash is the guy who's going to take care of it. Yeah. Like he'll actually take it and he'll baby it and make you it. Can trust into... him. Exactly, yeah. And so like everybody's different yeah. and every client is different. Every project is different and we're highly customized mm -hmm. in what we do. And we don't, like, you don't need everyone to come to you. You no. just need the specific I, people. I just like need the people customers. who understand what they need yeah. and what they want to do and we align. Right? There are people who come to me and their styles are just not aligned. Yeah, right, and then you too... can easily say, like, we're not going to work together. Not even that. I just say, well, let me let me talk to this person, this person, this person, because they're better suited to you. Yeah. Right? So, and that's a hard conversation sometimes, because they come to you very excited, like, mm -hmm. I want to do this with you. It's like, no, no, you don't. Yeah. Like, I see what you like, and I see what you want to do, and I see you want to grow, and that's fantastic, but that does not align with our brand. And brand alignment is really important today. Mm -hmm. like, like, some people want to buy our scrunchies and sell them, mm. but, like, right now, we can't keep up with the inventory. No. But at first, I said yes to almost everybody because mm -hmm. I wanted the sale yep. and then I had to cut back a lot of people and then it did it was awkward mm -hmm. and then I have to say no to a lot now only because the inventory but also some don't align with the brand. Do you feel success comes from getting comfortable saying no? Um, I don't know 
know, maybe. Now, because you're saying no to a lot of things. Like for me, I say no to consumption of media, for example, right? So I'm like, I could spend my time watching Netflix and all that, but I don't. Yeah. I'm very clear about that. I, I, I take on um, less projects than I receive interest in. Yeah, that right? is true, yeah. So it's kind of like you get to the point where you're like, in order to make this work, you need to have a refined kind of like understanding of what makes Your a priorities. good project. Yeah. yeah. Like I know from start to finish, like what the project is going to look like mm -hmm. before we even get started, right? So because I see it up here and I sit there like when we're doing the Choose Bubble, I already knew when I walked in here, I was like, this is what it's going to look like. Yeah. Like the image is instantly in my head. And if I don't make that photo that day, it'll sit there and burning in my brain to the point where I'll be like, hey Tina, I've got this really cool shot I want to do. Mm -hmm. And it, it actually really will like bug me that I didn't get that shot. Yeah, you get consumed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I guess like when I first started the business when I was alone, I did have plans to like hang out with friends the couple nights, but then I did say no mm -hmm. and I felt so bad because back then yeah. it was pre-pandemic, so you hang out with everyone you all could, the time. You could freely go wherever you want, yeah. Yeah. So I said no to a lot and then I felt bad and I was yeah. like, I'll just make scrunchies while we watch TV. Like it's fine. And mm -hmm. they're like, it's okay and then i had to say no to a lot of that and like mm -hmm. decline i actually had a trip booked to florida um the following february but my business yeah. was just so busy i didn't go yeah so i did say no to a lot to then focus on what i knew i needed to do like yeah. i had to chase this opportunity because yeah. those things can wait yeah well, and this and is what i love doing too it i made feel me like happy it's a prioritization too. Right? It's like you mm -hmm. found it really early. Like you, you found it young, which is awesome because you're going to be able to go through life and understand what drives that. And right. And there'll be phases. You'll go into stages where you'll be like, okay, I want to expand and do this. I want to do mm -hmm. this. Right. And like, I truly believe that there's like cycles of businesses and cycles of brands yeah. where you turn around, and you're like, okay, now we're going to go and do this. So we're going to yeah. do this and we're going to really focus on this. And then sometimes we're like, do I really want to do this <laughs> sometimes? Yeah, and then those are the ones you say no to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we're actually moving. Did I tell you kind of? Yeah, you're going to new, bigger space. Yes. So we finalized like the plans for it. Amazing. And they submitted the permit to the city. Okay. And then now we're just waiting, hopefully. Yeah. Is it in the same building or is it? Yeah, on the other side. On the other side? So you just got to wheel all your stuff over there? Mm hmm Have you got like one of those big old like... There's movers in this building that Perfect. can do it. Yeah, there you go. And then we'll have our own entrance. Nice. So you have a dedicated entrance? Mm -hmm. Are you going to open up to the public? No. <laughs> Well, we won't have enough room and people do ask us that a lot because I used to work in retail. What about doing distribution days where you just open up like one day and say, this day will be open to the public, form a oh, line. We don't have enough people to it's focus on that aspect. On, online is other. such a, online opens up so much opportunity. Mm -hmm. right? And we have to focus on that customer service yeah. and then we'd have to focus on in-person customer service and like um, internal inventory, just like a whole nother animal that we don't have employees yeah. to do yet. Yeah. 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 But I feel like that's like on the very bottom of my list probably. Yeah. Probably never <laughs> to be honest. Well, and it's funny because I think we all have those lists, right? And it's like, I feel like writing them down is really important too because mm -hmm. over the years your list can change. You can look back and be like, wow, I'm glad I didn't do that. Yeah. Right? So, and that's kind of an interesting like sidebar is like we literally just because we're doing one thing doesn't mean there's like a dozen other things that are not going on in our heads yeah right like there's yeah. you're sitting there going i'm gonna do this i want to do this i want to build like this and mm -hmm. you know that's an important thing to because you got to listen to those like ideas right yeah. so like we're building out uh kind of a related company right now at the oh. same time as cool. running this company like i actually so i run this like amp visual media is like an amalgamation of my photography the videography yeah and the CGI work. The CGI works on the AMP visual media site because that's what I want to propagate there. Mm -hmm. And Is then it I keep AMP or AMP? Uh, AMP or both. So it's basically Ashmore Photography. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I say AMP. Yeah, AMP, cool. But it's like fun it. how our initials are like XXL, yeah. AMP. Because like I just like letters. the, I like it. It's clean. It's yeah, like I three like letters simple. down. Yeah. yeah. And so like AMP really stuck with me and like it was my good friend, um, Alex Hilbrand actually helped design it. Oh, cool. And we kind of, and we started chatting and he's like, well, you should do this and do this. And the way he designed was very much how I photograph. So he wants to know the core of the story mm -hmm. and everything tells that, right? So yeah. like it's very specific and I wanted to be a brand that I would set and forget. Like there was no more like, because I had gone through so many different brands. Like I'd been through Phoenix Design um, I just Ashmore Photography, I had Studio 25, Bambino yeah. Photography. I can't remember the other ones. Oh <laughs> but like, it was so many. Yeah. And like, this was like my, I'm done. I don't want to keep re 
building and rebuilding and it was really just me understanding who I was as an artist yeah. understanding what my business was going to be mm -hmm. and then that was kind of like that's like kind of my hub now for all visual media yeah. which is why it doesn't say amp photography yeah. right or amp photography it's just like it's visual media because anything that is visual we do yeah basically so and not in a kind of like we'll just do anything it's like no we're really specific in what we do we do you know kind of high-end photography and video and then the cgi is worked into that right so yeah no. that was the same with when i was naming my website i was like should it be xxlscrunchy.ca and yep. then my friend lauren was like well if you want to expand your products one day you dot don't com. want to narrow down your business to yep. just the one thing yeah they so. say you're supposed to own like at least dot com and dot ca if you're mm -hmm. a canadian and if possible own every single derivative of it too so like dot yeah. net so then it all leads dot back biz, to yours. and then just pipe it all back in yeah yeah so which makes sense mm -hmm. like i think the dot ca makes sense if you're only doing canada if you're only ever going to work in canada Canada. Yeah. But yours can go global, mm -hmm. right? Do you get global or are you yeah. Just, yeah? As of last like after we posted like one TikTok went viral. Yeah. And then So what does a viral TikTok look like? Um well to me it means it hits a million views. Okay. Like very quickly within That's a couple a lot days. Of views. Yeah, so I want to touch base with the YouTube Shorts because yeah. I didn't really explain that yet. Yeah, sorry, we kind of like, like, we skipped by it. <laughs> so the YouTube Shorts, I post every once in a while because you have to post immediately. So I get lazy because okay. I don't have drafts. Yeah. So I'll post one that I think that I like and that okay. people would like, like the community on YouTube. Like yeah. I don't post as much, not mindless, but not mm -hmm. as much like random stuff on there. It's yeah. more specific, but it's also stuff I already made. Like it's okay. never made specifically for a short. Can you give me an example of like a, a show that you've done recently? Like yeah. yeah so we got mm, okay so in that machine there's like paper tape and it's like my custom design this one here yeah uh, at the bottom but i can show you with this so we got this this brand sent it to me so i could do an unboxing oh cool i love doing unboxings because like they That's like fun. hearing the noise and like this people love this asmr so you stuff need, you need a good mic then for that yeah yeah so this is a tape. I designed it and it nice. has like my logo on it. And then I put it in that paper tape machine Okay. and you press it and it shoots out and it's water activated. Oh, neat. So it kind of right? just goes right onto the box. Yep. And yeah. it just... And you, that's all of, your artwork, right? Yep. That's beautiful. Thank you. So I got that and I did an unboxing and okay. I uploaded it on TikTok and it went to like maybe over a million views pretty quickly. What is... So this is not your first million view video? Yeah. Because I can tell by your face, like, oh, this is a million. Yeah. So your first million dollar, uh, yeah, like your million dollar view, <laughs> yeah, like your million views. Yeah. What What are the emotions that you go through as a creator? Because you're a creator. Mm -hmm. Like when you like to admit it or not, right? It's like you're, yeah. when that happened, like was there a gradual build to this where you're getting like 10 views, 40 views, 100 views, 1,000 views? On TikTok, no. It was very quick. It was explosive? Yeah. Okay. But what was the, the video? Uh, so this girl in Belleville, mm -hmm. she tried to make a scrunchie. Okay. Inspired by mine. Oh no! I and she put it in the background, like my photo, and then I didn't even see it. And my friends like, "Oh my god, Tina, this girl made a video about you, and it's going viral." And I was mm -hmm. like, "Oh no! Like she's gonna show how, like yeah. she can make it and ruin my business." Like I yeah. was very scared, but she made it, and it was actually so funny. She made it. It was so big. It was like like a bonnet. I have to show it. I'll send it to you later. Yeah, you should. Yeah, please do. It was so good. And then I messaged her right away. I was like, oh my God, can I send you some? Like, thank you. Cause yeah. those people bought from my store from seeing that video. Nice. And then we sold out that day. Amazing. At home. Yeah. So we had tons of orders. So you like sitting in your basement, panic. Wondering what's happening. Yeah. Why are there Cause like your phone's like visitors? ding, 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 ding. Yeah. yeah. Why are there a hundred visitors on my site for the next 24 hours mm -hmm. like remaining? And I was like, usually at that point, maybe 10 or five. Yeah. Um, so basically you tapped into what? Well, I mean, was this person an influencer? No, she's just a, just a random girl in yeah. Belleville. Which I love because like, I hate, the term influencer so much. Same, I don't like So much, that. it's like, so basically you're popular enough that it doesn't matter what you do, as long as you're promoting someone's product. It it brings home the the insecurities of the child of me growing up and not being the cool kid, right? And then seeing the cool kid getting all the friends because of just They're who just they were. Labeled they were just cool. cool. Yeah, so they had something about them that was cool. So like, that's the influencers of today, right? And yeah. like, ironically, a lot of the influencers are, are hyper rich. So now you've got these people that are out there and showing these lifestyles and the kids want to go and be like that, right? So mm -hmm. like I was- They don't show the real majority. No, and it's like, I'm explaining to my kids, like I think the scariest transition for me in listening to children was when I heard 
children when I was growing up, like I was like a young adult, hearing children say, I want to be a celebrity. Yeah, or I want to be famous. Who well, no, knows a celebrity, that was the main part, because the celebrity, the fame was in like encapsulated in it. But up to then, when I was a kid growing up, we had musicians. If you wanted to grow up, you want to be a musician, or you yeah. want to be a movie star. Yeah, or, or a space man. Like, yeah, or you want to be a sports moon. guy, right? Or yeah. a space man, whatever it was. Then this new genre came out. Uh, it was really Paris Hilton that started it. Yes. Where it was like, you were famous so well known <laughs> that you yourself are that famous thing and you are that celebrity, right? That's mm -hmm. what a celebrity is. And people wanted to be a celebrity. And I'm just like, but celebrities contribute nothing, yeah. right? They don't, now they're putting out content and now they're putting out media so you can argue they're creators, right? But the celebrity was really hard. And then along comes these new wave of micro celebrities called influencers. Mm -hmm. And those were kind of really interesting because they didn't really do much, yeah. but they still were able to generate massive amount of interest on brands just purely on who they were. So I find that interesting as a, a normal person, not, a, not an influencer, not a celebrity that was able to kind of draw that. And that's why I feel that TikTok is probably your better medium, mm -hmm. like for every business. Yeah. is to show like real like mm -hmm. these people don't care they don't yeah. care who you are they They'll, want the real they want the They'll real get yeah mad at the fake yeah exactly yeah so like i know that the people i follow on tiktok is like a doctor who makes fun of doctors and the way that they do things but mm -hmm. it's in a very intelligent way and it's funny yeah. and like yeah. the double the double talking thing back to himself kind of oh, thing yeah just cracks me up because i'm like my biggest thing about not shooting video is i don't have a subject for you? Yeah. So like what the reason mean? I don't film that much video and well filled is all my video, right? Is because I don't have a subject. But, you, but that's a really bad excuse because I can be the subject. And yeah, that's... all your content and your thoughts could be your own subject. Exactly. Yeah. So I have no excuse really at that like, point. What do you mean you don't have I know. content? You just it's said stupid. You I, I, again, I, that's, yeah, yeah, that's the hard part when for me is like getting over that, that, and I'm, this is the year I'm going to try. Right? It and will I'm, be hard at first. Like yeah. I did cringe at myself at well, first. And that's as, exactly. Yeah, and it's hated like, it. yeah. And then I was like, no, I have to get ready. Like I have to shower and like, yeah. you just go Like, look, that. I'm like, today I'm obviously made for editing here today. I've got like you know, unshaven, um, just yeah. We're matching outfits. Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, you're just missing the khaki pants. <laughs> so, I know I actually have pants like yeah, that. Yeah, they're super comfortable. That's the yeah. problem. It's like, it's like, yeah, but like this is, this is one of, uh, actually this is Alex's design for, this is actually a, an oh, amp cool. shirt. So yeah, there's actually, there's a story behind it. So this is the, uh, the cat piss pelican shirt. Mm -hmm. um, one of my kids left the cat in the garage and I had <gasps> one of my open pelican cases in the <gasps> garage and the cat got locked in there for all day. And so he was looking for somewhere to go and take a leak. Was there and stuff he, in there? No, there's nothing. It's just nice squidgy foamy oh, foam. At least your equipment wasn't there. Yeah, luckily, because we were all set up. We were shooting, I think we were shooting for Signal at the time there. We had all our oh. gear set up. And so literally like went right in the case. And so I went and I, <gasps> basically opened the like the case was kind of like half open i'm like okay whatever and as i opened it fully to put the gear in i got this waft of like cat urine oh my god and that I would was have died oh i was furious and i'm just like and then i see the cat in the corner like oh crap <gasps> and i'm no. like you've been in here all day i can't get mad at you yeah. so let the cat back into the house and then he scutters off downstairs to his box right but it's like that became a joke because i basically uh, had to get rid of all the foam right and then bleach the box to make oh it God. not smell like anything. I would have just thrown it out because um, that's just me. It's a $400 case. I know, I just, I throw you, things out. Would, yeah, so we basically <laughs> purged it and then it's still in production now and it still works. It doesn't stink, luckily, yeah, but course. that was the whole story behind it was the Capus Pelican. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So that is this guy here and then we made it into look like a band and the funniest thing happened last year when I was at the pop-ups at the Bay. Mm -hmm. Someone was trying to make conversation with me. About I said, shirt? oh, I love their recent album. I was like, yeah, it's Aww, great. And so I'm like, I'm just like dying inside. I'm just like, yeah, you have no idea this is a fabricated thing, but that's cool. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. I said, what do you think of the second song? It's a bit controversial. Like, oh yeah. It's like, Aww. yeah. So, <laughs> that's so funny. But yeah, so that's, uh, that's the story behind that. But for me, like getting in front of the camera is going to be the hardest thing because mm -hmm. I think I just I'm so like I'm so and used like to thinking about that hypercritical so much. right hypercritical and actually every you're on day right now. I know and I've done like interviews and stuff like that yeah. and I've done and you are the editor you I know. can fix it and then you That's don't almost have a problem, to post though. it is that a problem for you no I love it because I'm like oh I'll just fix it later at the beginning was it a problem no okay only because I didn't really have time to doubt because yeah. so much was going on type yeah. thing. Okay. So you just, just, just have to do, do it. it. 
Okay, yeah. The biggest thing for me is getting over that creation and getting into documentation. It right? took a while. Like my brain is not wired for documentation. Right? It, it shows in my practice. photography. It, yeah. Like I was very kind of scripted at first. Like I did have some like tips did you videos. Write, did you write some scripts out behind the camera? Uh, no, but like in one video I did like social media tips yeah. where I was telling them about my journey, but yeah. I wanted it very laid out well. Okay. And I can't just speak freely sometimes. Like I like having. Yeah, like this notes. is nice that we have the notes so you can at least like if we're like, okay, what else do we need to talk about? Because I, mean, I don't want to forget things. No. No, because I also like forget. these are all really good points. Like I think I'm just making sure we've covered. Yeah, document versus create. I Where still want to talk it? about the YouTube short. Yes, yeah, so sorry. Let's talk about. Yeah, it's okay. We can but cap like, this one. Going over, getting over, documenting and stuff. It just takes practice. Okay. And I did actually watch like while I was making scrunchies, I would watch videos about other people telling you how they did it. Mm. And they're like, you talk like this to the camera and then visualize this. And yeah. I just watch YouTube tutorials too. Yeah. I think like like maybe don't dive in but watch other stuff for tips if so i'm one of those people i just have to dive in or i won't get it done oh. I, I won't even i'll consume the media but i wouldn't i'll just spend like well, you months dove consuming in yet, the media. so maybe you should because that's my point is like just diving in like and just keeping it simple keeping it on the phone like just saying you know that's how we're going to do it versus like and then setting you can out. make it better eventually like yeah like i would i would actually go to your similar setup to what you have oh. right even like i have a bigger camera Mm -hmm. version but i mean it's basically a similar setup i would just throw it on a on a goby and then just do that so yeah yeah put a bit of mic on it yeah <laughs> i know i just have that little fuzz that came with it the dead kitten yeah. is what we call this yeah yeah so yeah so youtube shorts okay but also okay youtube short and then viral tiktok after yeah. Okay, so YouTube short. So I posted that YouTube short, but I already it already went viral on TikTok. Okay. And I kind of knew it would go well on YouTube. Yeah. But the brand also, um, they wanted me to post it on there mm. for like sending me all that yep. tape. So I posted it on there and then it got like maybe 20,000 views the first day. Wow. But then three weeks later, it is now at almost 10 million views. That's insane. Like it's still growing. That's insane. So now, does that count towards your view account as well? Or is that yep, like... on YouTube. Yeah. yeah so like, because I know that YouTube has like different kind of like markers, right? Like mm -hmm. it's subscriptions mainly, right? I yeah, guess their goal is they want to views. drive uh, yeah. subscriptions, but yeah. they also want to drive views. Mm -hmm. Did you did you do any hashtags or anything? Or is it just like... Um, I think I do like basic hashtags, like packaging, small business, XSL scrunchy, stuff yeah. like that. Okay. So you just kind of keep it very simple. Yeah. But okay. I feel there's like 30 that you can fill out. So I just fill it all out. Yeah. With what I can. Okay. Yeah. And so that keeps growing so what i think is cool about reels and youtube shorts is that it can keep growing mm. but like if that that TikTok view from 1 million it's not going to hit 10 million next year no it's capped it's kind of yeah it's done mm -hmm. unless people go back and look but it's not going to go as increasing as no. youtube or instagram ever would I find, especially youtube i find i'm less likely to deep dive in TikTok. yeah it's hard yeah yeah i tend to like i watch the video like there'll be part one part two videos and i get like part two and i haven't seen part one yeah. and i'll be like eh, I'll just keep going i won't try to go back and i feel like that's mm -hmm. a mistake that they make on the behalf because they're like they're trying to drive the views to their account mm -hmm. when the reality is most people are just going to flick by and be like yeah. i don't care that much right mm -hmm. like TikTok, you have microseconds to deal with your, your your audience so they just move on yeah so if you're posting on TikTok, you should also do youtube shorts yeah. me as well yeah exactly when that's kind of like the you kind of have What's the best way to put it? Because all of these drive back into your core, which is um, my shop. your shop. Yeah. Like that's your that's your ultimate goal is to make sure that people are aware of your shop. Mm -hmm. right? So people will go to the shop and then they will also follow us and mm -hmm. then subscribe to us. Yeah. So like the subscribers have been growing so much from that one mm -hmm. video. Yeah. And do you find that there's like a very, um, this is going to be a nice segue. Um, is it very niche? Like, do you have like a very specific audience? Um, audience yeah. Um, I'm not sure because some people are like aspiring business owners mm -hmm. or some people are like 12 years old yeah. and then some people are parents and yeah. then sometimes people are like I'm like a man and I have no hair don't know why I'm here but I'm so proud of you or something like that yeah. so it's like very for me I feel very broad. Mm. Do you I actually track your audience? Um, like, we like, do look and like, I think it is from like 18 to 30. 18 to like 30, the majority, and then female? majority female? Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah, I'm like a 50-50. It's oh. weird actually. It's like surprising. I'm mean, just like 49-51. Oh. With 51 being um, a female audience mm -hmm. and 49 being a male. And it oh. keeps going back and forth. Cool. It depends on the content I put out too. Mm -hmm. So if I put out content that's very kind of like um, commercial photography-esque, I'll see yeah. my male audience grow. And then if I put out kind of like content, like just basic content, what I'd call it, like just putting stuff together, like, um, like stories and stuff like that, I'll see the female content grow. Oh. Yeah, so it kind of waves back and forth. That's fun. Yeah. Um, what's the, 
what's the best word? I don't think professional like ass kicker is a is a good term. But like someone who's gonna drive you forwards. Um, what do they call those? Um, oh, advisors. No, someone who's gonna accountability. Accountability oh, partner. You accountable. Right. So like I have a yes. running group in um, like Facebook messages. Mm -hmm. We have like five guys in there, and then basically everyone posts their their run and their time, and just oh, yeah. makes yeah, other I people have, accountable. Like, a gym accountability yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So it's like you know someone's gonna basically kick your ass into doing what you should be doing, mm -hmm. versus what you're probably not supposed to be doing or, or avoiding doing the necessary. Because right? like, I feel like that's a lot of people get into that habit of avoiding what's necessary yeah. and just keep... Because there's no one to hold you accountable. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so, so it's easy to skip. Yeah. Like you could skip your you could, you could if stop, it weren't for that yeah. group. I'm going to ping you and be like, make me accountable for this. Yeah. yeah. I'd be like, did you film this yet? Yeah. I'd be like, you're coming to film this day because yeah, be I cool. need you this day. Yeah, that'd be perfect, yeah. Yeah. And make sure I'm not on set. <laughs> yeah. Not for a couple months, maybe. But I yeah. do want to put up wallpaper on one wall. That gives, me, that gives me time to actually think. Are you going to make your own wallpaper? I want to someday. You should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's honestly that fabric. design, dude. That design on right? those—it's the one on our bag. I know. Too, and those that boxes. design, if you put that on wallpaper, that would be cool. That would be amazing. I right? would put it up. Oh, that'd be so cool to mm -hmm. put it up in that room because you just be like, need it to match, right? So you need yeah. it to kind of like rotate and match. So there's techniques you can do in Photoshop to do that. Yeah. Because I do it for textures for CG work. Mm -hmm. Like we'll take like a basic texture yeah. and then you quad it and you put it interior. To make it seamless. So then it's seamless, yeah. yeah. So, so that can be the same kind of thing probably. And then I could transfer over to fabric because that's like an end goal or something. Mm -hmm. Is that your end goal is like to be um, merch like what you're doing there? Um, yeah, and have our own fabric for yeah. scrunchie and then finally name one after myself. <laughs> You haven't got a Tina yet? No, because I'm waiting for that one to like with the with my artwork on it. Because you have a lot of lot of names here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we add it. The next collection is all like boy names. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think that's really nice. Mm -hmm. And then the collection after this, which I'm super excited about, is the swim collection. Oh, cool. So they cool. can get wet. So you're gonna do uh, eventually get into swim gear too, um, and do like stuff like that, or are you going into clothing at all, or are you just staying um, I with? I think just scrunchies for now, yeah. just because there's so many materials to make. Yeah. But the next goal for products when we get yeah. to our new place after all those crunches. I feel like we could have like home stuff. An entire podcast on what makes a product unique. Yeah. And like the things that you look for. Because right? the things, the things that, that I do for it. Exactly. Yeah. Like I look for very specific things. Mm -hmm. right? And you do too. And it's like refining that vision. Yeah. It takes time. Yeah. Right. Like at first I just started with random fabrics, but it was that I liked. Mm -hmm. But now um, I think our launches are so successful because yeah. my mom also picks out fabric. Yeah. She picks out fabric that initially I hate. Yeah. I would never buy them. But there's like some clothing stores aren't successful because the owner just picks what they like, but not mm -hmm. everyone likes that. Yep. So I'm lucky. I, I would argue my mom. that I would argue that they're not successful because they haven't found their market. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a there is, you know, a bunch of people who like what Tina likes. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of people who like what, you know, Margaret likes. My the thing mom. is Margaret did not actually own your mom. Yeah, it's like they don't have that market available to them because mm -hmm. they haven't mm -hmm. gone out and searched for it. Yeah. They haven't gone out and found it. You did from a really early age you did. And that is what made the difference, right? Yeah. One client's not going to make or break you, yeah. right? Like you have such an audience. And the nice thing about the way you're building this is what we call authentic audiences. So mm -hmm. authentic audiences propagate themselves, mm -hmm. right? They're like, have you seen what Tina's doing? Yeah. Check this That's out. That's how it started, just word yeah. of mouth. Yeah, my kids, like, oh, my kids. <laughs> so my my oldest loves your brand. Oh, cute. And then, like, two weeks after she was, like, wearing your scrunchie daily, it was, like, when I cut her hair really short. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just, like, she has no hair to put up now. So, yeah. like, yeah. But she's, like, oh, man. I'm, like, yeah, I know. It'll grow back. Yeah, it'll grow back. Yeah, Aww. if she decides. She's she's in the short short hair stage right now, so. Mm -hmm. All right, shall we? What do we want to talk like, about look now? look at our list. Okay, building a brand. I think we talked about that. Locally speaking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. I mean, that's the main. And on my phone, I posted a story. I don't know if you saw I tag you. No. No, um, oh, right now? Uh, like this morning I posted This morning, yeah, I saw the I saw the tag on it there. Yes, we've got the Instagram questions maybe, So we can right? go through those Q&As, yeah. like, That'd be last. Fun. Yeah. But they did ask questions relating they to did? this. They did? Cool. Yeah. Because I know that um, I just picked up my phone and just went to Instagram for the first time today, and it's like, oh, there's Tina's post. And so I was like, so I just copied and dropped it on my story. <laughs> See, that's the problem is this, if there's stuff like that that's out there, it's very easy to use it, right? So it's mm -hmm. like, because it's done. Yeah. And I feel like that putting, getting to work and making that work is going to be key. So, yeah, I think like locally speaking. So like Belleville is not really known yeah, to be a big people center. People were doubting you for being in a small town. Yeah. And, and well, they actually told me that I was, I was crazy to yeah. start a commercial photography because there here. was no commercial photographers at the time, though, local. Yeah. And all the commercial and all the photographers here were very piecemeal. So like some of them did great work. Some of them did OK work. Some of them just, you know, they just all over the map. They not really had any niches. Yeah. Like you've got people who did like 
weddings and boudoir and baby but they photos. They do all of it. They do all of it. It's like yeah. and because that's like kind of almost what you have to do in a small town at first to survive type thing. I think it's the opposite. I think it's honestly the niche. Oh, that's like the mindset. Yeah, least. I think that's the mindset. I feel like the the niching is what made my company grow. And be able to charge what you charge. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. I, I established that I wanted to make sure that, you know, I wanted to grow the business into a proper photo, like, company. Yeah. And that meant I'd have to hire an assistant. I'd have mm -hmm. to have eventually go into video. So I knew these steps I'd be going through before I even started. Yeah. And I knew that in order to do that right, there was like an overarching plan. Mm -hmm. And so, and that was the niche, right? So like my, if you look at my overarching plan that's been written down is do commercial photography transition into advertising, right? So that transition between being local only to being worldwide, mm -hmm that's slowly happening now. So that transition mode is already in. So we're already doing that because we are putting stuff into CG, into video, stuff that we wouldn't necessarily do that has a broader audience. Yeah. Right? And I feel like that's the key right now. Mm -hmm. So, but being niche locally was really powerful. And like for, I feel like any aspiring artist or business that doesn't know their niche, mm -hmm. go back and learn it. In fact, that's like the number one thing I ask people. Like, what is your niche? What do you do? Mm -hmm. right? Like if I came in here and you're like, hey, I want to get you to kind of like help me grow my business. I'm like, sure, tell me about your business. Who's your market? Who are you talking to? Mm -hmm. Why do you talk to them? Why do you even do this? You know, like you can yeah. do a thousand other things and you chose to make scrunchies, mm -hmm. right? So tell me about that story. That's what I'm curious about because that's going to sell what you have, right? That's going to tell people what your brand is. Yeah. Right, and that's going to grow it. So, and that's just being niched. Yeah. I think it was hard. It's hard for a lot of people to be niche because I used to suffer this. Mm -hmm. um, when I was doing graphic design, I wanted to do all of it. So yep. I did logos, websites, and all this. But then I read a book and this one person's like, you have to do one thing mm -hmm. and do it well. Because like, if you were to buy someone, to buy a logo from someone, mm -hmm. you'd want to buy it. You'd spend more money on the person that only does logos yep. as their profession. Yeah. So if you said to me, like if someone said to me like, oh, where can I get scrunchies? You're top of the line, right? Because that's what you do it's in the mm -hmm. name right that's that's it you know yeah. so being that really hyper focused is going to be powerful in the long term in the short term it feels it's scary at first because then you have to say no mm -hmm. to other things and it comes back to saying no to everything right so yeah and it feels like everything when you first start because mm -hmm. right? i remember like, like you don't want to say no dude so i used to get requests coming and be like well can you shoot this wedding yeah i know you don't shoot wedding. can you just shoot this we love your style and i did take a few right because it's like but i didn't show them and i feel like that's what really crushed it is like the people that didn't get their wedding showed by me mm -hmm. they were like wow well, he didn't show the weddings and they weren't like they weren't the core of my business anymore yeah right and so then that petered out and i think my last wedding was god five years ago and that was for a friend and she was just like i really want your stuff yeah and you know just come on out and just a couple of hours and do it and it was it was yeah. a beautiful wedding and it was fun so yeah 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 that's the same with murals when i scrunchy picked up i couldn't yeah. do murals full time because one i couldn't focus all my attention to the client so mm -hmm. it wasn't fair and then it wasn't fun for me in my mind because no. i was scrunchies was on my mind yeah so you did murals for a bit yeah that so was i did like it your... full time for maybe I did it full time for like a year, but before that was part time. For Locally two years. or or in Toronto? Uh, when I was in Toronto. Okay. But I went different places for it. Yeah. Which was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Do you miss it? Um, a little, but now yeah. I get to put my artwork on like clothes and like in our mm -hmm. packaging and control it more. Yeah. Because a lot of the mural work, the initial part was just negotiating the prices. Isn't it fun? It was so stressful, it's but when I got it, it was awesome. It's, it's really difficult, and, and I think I speak for like most artists out there, it's really difficult to put a price on something you adore. Mm -hmm. and especially when someone comes along. they don't see it yet. No, but they, they like, don't know the time. Artists see it. And they change their mind. They do so quickly. Mm -hmm. And you're just sitting there and you're just like, we and had an deposits. idea. Deposits, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's like deposits. That. like Contracts. I, I, contracts and deposits are like 99% of my business, I swear. It's like, you know, like until we're confirmed, this is what we're going to be paying, this is what it is. If you change your mind, it costs this. Yeah. And that. And yeah, it was a yeah. lot. To Explaining deal with. to clients scope of work documents is really hard. And doing timesheets. I used to do yeah. timesheets. See, I don't logos. do timesheets. I don't believe in time. That was like when yeah. I first started. Yeah. Like, oh, here it makes it. sense. It makes sense a little bit here, but at the same time, it should be production. I know. Right? Like if you're if your employees come in and they make X amount of scrunchies a day, that's considered a good day. Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't need to be something like draconian about it. Yeah. You know, like they got a nice comfy couch they can sit on and watch TV. And yeah. I love that. I love that. That echoes what you had at the beginning. Yeah. And that was mindful. There's mm -hmm. no way you didn't do 
do that non-mindfully. Yeah, yeah, setting that up. Yeah. yeah, like that's a big deal. Like your next place, your next uh, shop. It has is that, do you call class. it a shop or a studio? This is kind of a studio. I just way. call it studio. Yeah, so your next studio is going to have a couch. Of course, it's going to get another couch. We might do a smaller TV because um, when people come, they don't actually watch TV until the second half of their shift mm. because TV is a distraction. So, and this is work. Like I had yeah. to realize this is work. Yeah, um, that's a hard one. Yeah, and then they listen to music or podcasts or headphones yeah. usually because it's so open it's distracting to all of us mm -hmm. like as the team grew i had to really like, cut down on tv and yeah. then sometimes the girls don't even watch tv at all yeah yeah but so i think i'm building at I'm that the main one who watches it yeah you're just silly, like <laughs> yeah. yeah only because like i'm so experienced in making it that i well, can do and that you're probably in here a lot more too Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the next space, I think, like a smaller TV on okay. the side. I like it. But it will have its own room, like a closed off room yeah. to Elastic. So then the seamstresses could do their own thing mm -hmm. on the side too and like yeah. not be distracted. You could always use um, curtains too as dividers to start if you're unsure about your space. Just build oh, yeah. like curtains and then that way you're not like building walls or kind of creating like segments until you know how the, the space flows. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's cool. I like it. No, I like that idea, that intentionality behind building out your history into this too is key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, tomorrow never arrives. <laughs> I think we talked about that. We talked about it. Yeah, like we've we've crossed over that growth in a small market. We kind of talked about hometown advantage. We kind of talked. Yeah. No matter where we are, we all hold back. <laughs> What do, you, what do you, so I feel like that's the most under talked about thing in building any kind of venture is we always, like there's always a step, like when you get going and start building out something and it works, mm -hmm. there is a sense and, and it's almost addictive in nature, right? As you want to go and catch that same kind of feel of accomplishment and growth. And so you naturally want to progress it, right? I don't feel like that's where entrepreneurship basically is, right? It's yeah. like building, 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 and then building something else, you know? So is there something you feel that's holding you back now from that next stage or do you find that they're still even at this stage you're still very unaware of those blocks I guess they'd be called I think I'm partially unaware but then I'm partially aware like I know hiring more people would help but then mm -hmm. it's like now you have to think about budgets and like and more people the whole future and then it's like can I maintain this growth mm -hmm. and then you don't want to overgrow too quick no because then you could quickly fall yeah because you don't want to crumble under your own weight right it's yeah like, so there's also complexity me. with with bringing people into stuff yeah right and it's it's far more than just like paychecks yeah right? sure. and, and people don't realize that it's like bringing people into stuff it, it changes everything and mm -hmm. so they have to be the right choice mm -hmm. right? and if they're not the right choice it becomes really apparent really quick yeah and then, right? and then there's that awkwardness start over, kinda, yeah. yeah which yeah. sucks which could be months down the line it could be years down the line yeah it could be days best if it stays because then no one's really committed at that point mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that's the thing i think that's holding me back because like the only way to scale your business mm -hmm. is to get people yeah well i mean the other thing you could if you wanted to scale would be to outsource but then you're giving up a massive amount of control yeah we do outsource some things like yeah. a lot of clothes and our packaging and stuff but then yeah it still has to run for you for quality and yeah, yeah. so it is a lot of time still yeah. but yeah <laughs> daunting i know and like thinking <laughs> of moving to the next space like that room there got opened because I asked our realtor, I was like, could we like open that room? Is that like, that side room there? Yeah. yeah. And at that time, he's like, we actually have a bigger space. And I was yeah. like, do I really want this right now? Mm -hmm. But we like, yeah. need it to yeah. grow. Well, and that's the thing too, is like the hardest part about doing something that doesn't exist is there's no roadmap, right? You can't go to the internet and like, I feel like your videos kind of do that for people behind you working on it, but mm -hmm. not ahead of you, right? So mm -hmm. you can't ever go and sit there and go, okay, let's look at how these guys, you know, scaled their scrunchy business from X amount of square foot to X amount of square foot. Yeah. Like, what did they do? What were the steps that they did? Mm -hmm. Right. And I feel like that's one thing that with, with me considering starting video stuff, that's kind of what I want to bring to the table for them. Yeah. It's showing like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a normal guy doing this. And like, I'm yeah. making a I'm lot of this a shit up. I'm just a normal girl who just yeah. stayed consistent. Yeah, staying consistent is really key, but also you don't have that way of knowing if you're right. Yeah, you just have to like keep doing yeah. and then if you're wrong, you just are you more are you more wrong than right or more right than wrong? I don't know. I think there were a lot of wrong moments I've had that I learned from. Yeah. So I think it's equal. Yeah. I feel like at the beginning you're more wrong than right. Oh yeah, with the shipping stuff and figuring that out. Yeah. Spent so much money on the wrong shipping to like learn the right shipping. Yeah. It's so like I, I always look back and go, I shouldn't have spent on that. I should have done this, this, this instead. Yeah. But it's because I spent on that that, that I know I not to spend. To do this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like you have to keep moving forwards and there's gonna be a huge amount of mistakes at the beginning. Yes. Right? And you're gonna be like and like people are like, How do you know to do this? I was like, I didn't, I did it and then I learned. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's very much learning while breaking stuff. <laughs> That's honestly, that's my, uh, that's my 
um, theory on this is like, I'm just going to move forwards knowing it's going to be not good at the beginning or not to my yeah. level that I want it to be and just keep pushing it forwards. So you say that, but then there's... But then I don't do it because I yeah. just, I block myself. Yeah. It's also on like... on the one thing though. I think means. it's on the one thing. Like my business is growing and like my, my work side of it is fine. Right. And like, I always ask myself, like, why do you want to build this? Like this part could take so much time because I know, because I make media for a living. I know how much time is spent in editing. I know how much time is spent even curating, even just basic video stuff. Yeah. Like, but the, the end time. result is I know. so rewarding. I know. I don't know, but I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, so YouTube possibilities. Yeah. So did you know, like, are you planning to upload to YouTube? So sure? I've been uploading to YouTube. Okay. So, but it's been in a different manner. So, and it's, and it's very much. You can schedule those too. Yeah. I just got to get ahead of the curve right now. Yeah. The problem is, is what I'm doing, I kind of realized is I'm creating and not documenting. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing is just a heart series, just a very kind of informal art series where I've been like basically taking a CG heart and then making it into different things. So I've got like oh, a yeah, I think I saw heart of stuff. ice, a heart of gold, all those kind of things. So we're working on those just to get better at some of the techniques and CG. Yeah. I think those I'm doing it wrong. Steps. Baby steps. Doing it wrong. I who think I'm doing who? it wrong. Here's why I think I'm doing it wrong. Is it's speed art, which is good if you know what you're looking at. Yeah. Right. So like all my clients are like, so if they I don't were know used, what I'm looking at. Yeah. They would know. Yeah. So like for someone like me who watches it, I can go, oh, he's doing this, he's doing this, he's doing this. Right. And all my friends. Yeah, you got to slow it down. No. Yeah. Yeah. And that involves having to actually implement some content in there. So we're going into like the documentation versus the creation. Now. Mm -hmm. Right, which actually is probably going to be smarter in the long run. I was getting around to doing that. So I kind of stopped doing that and I'm like, it feels okay. It feels okay. It didn't feel like I wanted it to feel. And I feel like what I'm doing is trying to build out an awareness of what I want to put out there. And I feel like my biggest thing needs to come from the core of why I do my business, which is to see other people grow. That's for me. Yeah. That's just for me, the speed art. And I, I'm going to continue doing it because I do like looking back and seeing the old techniques I used and mm -hmm. how many times I messed up on a model or whatever and fixed it mm -hmm. badly. I like seeing that, but at yeah. the same time, it's just going to be just for me. So I feel like I'm going to start doing the YouTube thing and talking more and being yeah. a talking explaining. head on the camera and explaining yeah, yeah. and sitting there storytelling and, essentially. storytelling yeah and yeah. just talking about what it takes to run a business in today's market yeah and like what what you're talking about in that video too yeah. even just doing a quick intro yeah so i think like having succinct like each one of these would be an individual i know right right like podcasts at least we can kind of like extrapolate and um by the time we finish this it'll be cut together so it's coherent mm -hmm. like we're bouncing all over the place but we can cut it together and make it coherent and it's our like pilot it's a pilot yes yeah, a tester <laughs> yeah. right so and like i feel like this is and like i do genuinely want to do podcasting so this has been a fun experience of understanding yeah, the process mm -hmm. i can you know. kind of envision the future now exactly and now like, it's a bit more solid like okay next time i want to have two mics i want to do this mm -hmm. set up a bit nicer like the lab mics are nice but they're not perfect you know having something that's a bit more kind of human yeah. right and i feel like um um, this is nice, but almost like a face to face is easier. Right. And having like across a table, like a, a conversation over like yeah. a coffee kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and I feel like that's what I'm going to do. Like, um, Jerry Seinfeld had a, you know, of Jerry, yeah. right? So he had this, uh, this, uh, this show called comedians in cars Oh, cool. and nobody knows about it, but it's yeah, I don't. one of his best, just absolute love it. So the, the concept is this, Jerry is a massive car nut. He loves cars. Okay. So he'll show up and pick someone up, a comedian in a car mm -hmm. and they'll film their talk going to the coffee joint then they'll sit at a coffee joint they'll get crappy coffee mm -hmm. talk over coffee fun. banter and then they'll drive back home oh, that's so fun. it's a fun concept no one knows of it because it wasn't very successful but in my eyes it's better than anything he's created because there was some authentic moments between him and another comedian mm -hmm. which if you put two comedians together is fantastic hearing them riff yeah. off each other like if you watch any one of his watch the uh, ricky gervais one okay. right ricky gervais british comedian very funny guy you know and like building up that concept is really interesting so but that's worth watching for like that conversation okay hi dad how's it going <laughs> <laughs> yeah so every time he sees the camera he says hi youtube did you hear yeah I, I say, hi youtube <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> you just need a, a uh, that should be one of your reels. Just a whole, like, cut a whole bunch of them. Hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. I know, I made a compilation video yeah. about it because people were asking awesome. for it. And I was like, yeah. okay, I'll dig it up. Well, and he's become a character mm -hmm. within your videos. Like they want to watch his fishing videos, yeah. which is cute. That'd be amazing. You just put it out as, like, a secondary video, mm -hmm. a secondary channel. Just yeah, throw a GoPro on him and off he goes. Yeah, because I got yeah. him a GoPro for Christmas. <laughs>
It's like, hit go, and then just fish, so. Oh yeah, with YouTube though, there is possibilities of it bringing in a lot of income. Yeah. Surprisingly. Did you think about, when you started up YouTube, was it to build the content or was it because you wanted it to become monetized? Well, when I first made the video, I was like, oh, one day it can be my retirement plan because I, like I know someday yeah. I cannot make scrunchies anymore. Yeah. So what did, when you, and so I guess this is, this is a very like me poking for me. Yeah. Um, when you like, so you make your YouTube channel and you're just like, I'm going to do this. Like, what was that? Like the reason why? Yeah. So because I wanted to film a tour, TikTok okay. only let you have 60 seconds at the time. Yep. And I was like, that's not enough to like share what I want to share. Okay. So, so why did you want to share thing. that? The tour of hmm. the studio, just because um, the audience was already on such a journey with me. Okay. I really wanted to show them more well, okay. in like better quality yep. and like actually talk yeah. and communicate better. Yeah. Because I didn't have any other way to tell Because 60 seconds is them. hard when to, like, especially when you get into, into depth and thing. Like, yeah. That's... And like, like this, this way isn't fun and yeah. I can't talk. No. No, because then you kind of have to spin the camera around and mm -hmm. yeah. And like the people that wanted to see, I wanted to give them like what they were getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Because I mean, you've got like, the thing is that the beauty of what you do too is there's a there's a physical element too where they can have the product in their hand, mm -hmm. right? And know where it comes from and just know that it's not some random factory making scrunchies and sending them out to them, right? It's mm -hmm. like a very personal thing almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a personal fun thing. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like the monetization of that, it was a secondary more than anything. It's like yeah if it gets like there. i didn't yeah. think about that i didn't think it would happen for like maybe two years like okay. my channel to grow yeah to at least a thousand i didn't think it would happen for like how long did it years. take like i don't know a couple months oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah i so, know because just from posting consistently like i posted every single week since starting okay and then i watched other youtube vloggers they're like you have to be consistent yeah. and then you'll get there no did matter you do what. daily or did you just stick to once weekly? a week yeah. Yeah. And then this year I was going to switch to bi-weekly and I was like, I want to keep this up because it's really helping. Yeah. And I actually am obsessed with editing. Like I wish yeah. I could only edit all yeah. day. Well, and I, I've been thinking about what story I want to tell mm -hmm. on YouTube. And it's really difficult to, I feel like today I could have done an easy story. So um, I remember watching Casey Neistat okay. and seeing his stuff go out and his stuff was in New York. Now, as soon as you step outside in New York, there's a story to tell. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know if you knew this about Belleville, but it's not exactly New York. So there's like the stories are different, you know? So like you have to kind of dig for your stories and you have to actually work for the stories. And like as any good journalist knows, the more stories around you, the easier it is to tell a story because then you can easily just go, okay, today we're going to, we'll just talk about this. Yeah. You know, when my concern has always been like, you know, if I go into YouTube, it has to be a daily thing. And that was, that was a big pressure for the longest time until. It's overwhelming. To it is overwhelming. It like and that. it's just and so much so that you don't get started. So it goes back to like fill in the laser thing, right? Which is like, he wants to start it. It, but doesn't want to start it because by the time he gets done thinking about how to film it, how it's to like it, overpowers you, and then you're well, because like he works behind the camera with me, right? So he knows what it takes to make an engaging video or he knows what it takes mm -hmm. to do that. So he gets so overwhelmed with that that he doesn't actually do anything as a result. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of what I want to kind of like figure out early Overcome. on. Overcome. Overcome, yeah. So by, by doing it weekly though, you can definitely Even have. Monthly. Yeah, I think if I was going to do it be weekly because it will force it. Because then like on days like last week when I was on set all week, that's going to be easy because I can literally sit there and talk about being on set and like in the times yeah. where it fills off like picking up food, I kind of sat there, put the camera up and just talk to it for like mm -hmm. five, 10 minutes and then, you know, cut and together. And your stuff. audio could just be like underneath the footage. And then like just time-lapse it. Yeah. yeah. I like tried to time-lapse on this guy, but it messed up. Oh, that's I the thought, worst. Yeah. It's like, mm. I set up like an entire studio. Like we're talking the full studio set that we have oh. and the it didn't record. Didn't work? No. I'm just like, it got one photo of me walking away. That was oh, it. That's the worst. That's happened to me before. Yeah. I'm just like, I should have shot this on my camera. I should have, like, this is why you don't use phones for this. I was so furious. Yeah. This thing was going out the window, so. But I mean, it's a good fun. Just, yeah, learning that was, was that was a hard, that was a hard lesson. Cause I was like, by the time I get to see Tina, I'll have some content put out there. So you, you can sit there and be like, but you're doing this, you're trying. And it's like, but no, <laughs> oh well. It's okay. Mm -hmm. This is trying. This is like a step to it. It is. I like feel a like. a stepping stone leading to it. Just talking about it even. I feel like defining it is your first step yeah you know like defining it and, I, and there's not a lot of creators that i know that didn't go for this like i have a good yeah. friend of mine and he does youtube and he's a trainer so what he does is he teaches people like photoshop and he teaches them cgi mm -hmm. and he's really good at it and he's like yeah but that first course that you saw of me doing the cg stuff that was my first ever course he's yeah. like i was nervous as shit could yeah. you tell i'm like no he's yeah, like so it's really all in here no right no one can tell no one can tell yeah so it's Sometimes just a case I'm like of am i awkward and then people are like that would look so natural and i was like okay good yeah 
But then it's only like when they say it, you think that because you're yeah. just overthinking. I feel like it's hypercritical of ourselves. That makes it really hard. And like, yeah. to the point where I'm like, do I just offshore the edit? Just say, here, Phil, edit this for me. No. You know, but yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. You get to enjoy the process. So. Yeah. Yeah. The process. Yeah. You need to go through it mm -hmm. and then eventually you'll be fine. <laughs> We'll try. Well, I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. I'm going to give it a shot. So strategy, strategy and direct, I see. Learning marketing is hard. I feel like that's, I feel like we could come back to that. Yeah. That's a hard and thing. And be, talk and, and talk, because I feel like marketing, marketing's changed. Yeah. I feel like all these people that say they know marketing don't really know marketing anymore mm -hmm. because it's a lot harder than they're actually letting on. Yeah. And like, I feel like you've tapped into it and we can go back and make an entire podcast about that. Yeah. Because that's a really cool, and I feel like episode like 23 or whatever, when we get back together and chat, I feel like yeah. that. we'll set up your new podcast studio and then yeah. do that. Yeah, okay. So I feel like that would be good, like to just talk just marketing. Because mm -hmm. right? a lot of people don't know where to start with that. No. But they easily could just yeah. at the with their phones. I think I'm going to be putting together some stuff that's basically explaining those first steps, like getting started in business like you see i see i don't want to talk about too much because it's such a big project I know, but right? really short form if you aren't a creator currently if you want to be successful in whatever niche you're going into being a creator is vital in today's market to grow yeah. like you can not you can do you the you can't not make content i know exactly you're gonna have to make some content that scared me <laughs> Wow, there it goes. But like, yeah, it's um, like building out that awareness of that is going to be really key for a lot of people. I feel like that's the thing that's holding back even my generation. Like I'm 40 years old. Like, so my generation is still holding back on that when they shouldn't be. Yeah. Right. So any like my kids, they're never going to know analog, which kind of scares me because like I grew up with analog and then went to digital. Yeah. Right. So do you remember analog? Kind like, of. Yeah. Like a little film? bit. It's, yeah. Film. Okay. Yeah. I like LCD film. clocks, you know, like um, cable television, no Internet. Yeah. I still remember right? that. Yeah, yeah. So you still remember that? Yeah. I remember switching it's to Wi-Fi. Yeah. It's my my kids generation. That is yeah. the true cut. They're the digital generation. Yeah. And like the reason I'm doing CG is because I know by the time these guys are old enough, that's going to be huge. Because mm -hmm. right now we're seeing these babies pop up like called Meta. Um, NVIDIA's got an online platform they're trying to build. They're trying to build online worlds. Yeah. And I know because I'm part of behind the scenes stuff and I see what they're building. Mm -hmm. It's massive. Yeah. Like it's so much bigger than what we realize. And it's going to change like VR and AR. Yeah are massive, right? Like if I told you that you could take your scrunchies and then have people with AR sets and then see, or even take their phones and do this and see an a and see the, your scrunchies on their desk. Yeah. And I can do that today. Mm -hmm. Like that's crazy. Imagine what they can do in five years from now. Right? And this just make it easier. If someone like me can access it now, which is like 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to access it. Yeah. Five years ago, I would have had trouble. But now we can access it fairly easily. Another 10 years, everyone's gonna have access to it. Just the same as everyone has access to a really good phone now. Mm -hmm. But yeah. That's going down the rabbit hole. Yeah, I know. I think of all that stuff and I'm like, oh God. Yeah, see that? And that scares you, but you're at the forefront of it right now. Mm -hmm. People are still going to need to put their hair up. Yeah. Did we want to hit the uh, Instagram and see what the questions were? Or? Oh yeah, I think we've got, yeah, all those are what we talked about. Yeah, we're here. Is there anything that we haven't really covered that you wanted to chat? But not that I can think of right now. Yeah, this is fun. I don't even know what time it is. 11. It's not bad. Went by so quick. That's two hours? Yeah. You have a lot of cutting. <laughs> I know. Fear of failure, lack of a special idea. Ooh. Can, right? we just, can we just say there's no such thing as a special idea now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you think there's anything that's, do you think there's anything truly unique like and special Like you make now? it special type thing. You make it unique. Yeah. You make it you, right? Like, uh, I feel like ideas, so everyone has an idea. Right? But there are also some people, like when I was younger, I would chase after what I thought could make me the most. Yeah. But it wasn't what made me the happiest. No. So. There was, um, I can't remember and who. And it's not special. No. But there was this one girl recently that she was in the news where she turned down a massive job. It was like a CEO job. Yeah. And she turned it down to do something else that was making way less. Yeah. But it's a passion project, like right? Too, yeah. And I think it was Gary Vee that even pointed out. And he's like, she gets it. She's like, st he's like, stop chasing after the money. Chase after happiness. Yeah. Right? Like if, if that idea, right? Like, if that idea is special to them, mm -hmm. it'll be special to a hundred other people at least. Yeah. And you only need a hundred real fans to make it worthwhile, right? Because if you can have something that grows organically mm -hmm. and becomes something cool, then yeah. that's great. But if it's, I feel like if it's a bad idea, it'll show itself up pretty quick. Yeah, and then you can right? move on and you yeah. learn from it. Yeah. Like a lesson type thing. 
lesson. A lesson. I didn't. I wanted yeah, to say quotes, failure, yeah. but I was like, that's a mean word. No, I think. I think honestly, I feel like failure is under talked about. Yeah. Because failure like is key. Like we talked about, it, like so making so many mistakes along the way. Mm -hmm. I'm being wrong more than right. I feel like failure is is negatively looked upon when it should be a positive. Yeah. Right. Because how do you fail? By going out and doing something different than what you're used to doing. And how do you succeed is also like by the continuing same thing. doing the same thing until you yeah. get it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the harder it is to get right, and the more failure there is, the greater the reward at the end. I don't think there's such a thing as a bad idea. Someone says life will never be perfect. You'll never have enough time, money, space, etc. Yeah, I feel like that's the one thing that drives a lot of uh, why entrepreneurs do what they do is like I'm acutely aware of that tomorrow is just full dead and like every second I know there's so much I want to do so I want to do yeah. it now you ever see that there's David Bowie on his last one of his last videos he's writing so much on a piece of paper that he writes onto the desk oh really and that's beautiful metaphor it's like yeah we have only a certain amount of time only a certain and he was acutely aware of the fact that he was dying before he wanted to. And he just wanted to get that information out and to share and to be a part of the world. And he was not ready to go. Yeah. And that's what that writing on the desk symbolized, right? It was him just running out of paper mm -hmm. and then trying to write on into the future. But that's probably going to get lost. Yeah. You know, everybody's going to get lost at some point. But like make the most of your time. Make the most of your time. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, there's, there's got to come a point where, yeah, you, you don't have much time. Yeah. But make the most of all your time. Don't become catatonic because if you get so focused on the fact that the time's not there, you'll you're never do anything because yeah. you're literally wasting that time, right? Um, actually, one of my first uh, ideas for a tattoo, because I have no tattoos on me, right? Yeah. And you're Tell designing me. my first one. Okay. So it's going to be a heart here. Mm-hmm with a clock on it so it's like a heart with cables coming Ooh. out like a heart of a bomb yes because i want to symbolize the fact that we only have a certain amount of time and i want something that i can look at and remind myself to not waste my time before my time wastes me yeah right so that's kind of what i want to do so yeah yeah i think my motivation with like why i made so many scrunchies like my mm -hmm. brother was like yeah you just moved home and you made scrunchies and you never stopped and i was like yep. yeah because i feel like i didn't have there's so much i want to keep making that mm -hmm. i need to make these and finish them so i can mm -hmm. continue so you can go to the next thing yeah yeah and build on yeah one question in the morning was living in a small country not sure if it will be a success and for how long hashtag netherlands <laughs> he's in the holland oh yeah. my goodness so a good friend of mine works in, in in the netherlands and he loves it there and yeah i will say that the way i met him was i have a folder that every year i update so 100 images okay. that inspire me oh, cool. and i go through the internet and throughout the year i'll throw like 100 images in there and it always has to be 100 it can never be over or under That's so cool. i have to delete images if there's too many or add some if there's not enough so basically i always have 100 and now I just cycle images. So I'll basically go and add like five at a time, for example, mm -hmm. and I'll delete five. But my goal is to see an overarching story. And in these photos for about six years was this one guy's photo. He had like a group of them. And I didn't realize this at the time. And I was in the CG course and I was talking to him and he was one of the people of that I've always cycled through. So he's been someone I didn't know was his work, mm -hmm. but I've really admired his work for years. Mm -hmm. And he's in the Netherlands and he does work across the Netherlands, across Europe. And what he did was he just did his best work. Like he made his best so he would be proud of it. And then people saw it and then they worked on it. And obviously understanding how to outreach, right? Yeah. That's a big part, right? Like when we talk about being in a small country, I would argue that, you know, we go back to Belleville versus New York, right? I will be successful in New York or Belleville because I'm willing to put in the time to get known out there mm -hmm. and also to do the good work, right? And yeah. like, and that's the key is do Just some good work, in the time too. put in the time and outreach. And yeah. outreach is really hard because it means making yourself vulnerable. Yeah. Which is where, you know, I'm struggling right now. And Almost not asking for help, but you are... Yeah. Reaching out. Oh, well, you're reaching out saying, this is what I do. I think it's cool. Do you think it's cool? Would you buy it? You know, that's kind of it, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, when you're in uh, Netherlands, which is still... It's a it's a large com uh, country compared to other smaller countries, right? you got to think of it that way. And not only that, you have access to the internet. And there's the, le the, the, the playing field leveler. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, if you can access the internet from wherever you are, location doesn't matter. Yeah. Right? If you're making a product, 
location doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a service, it matters who you're marketing to, right? Like say, you know, I was At charging. At that point, you might even have to move if that's what you not want. Not necessarily, but you have to be smart about your business. So let's yeah. say I wanted to be an advertising photographer who was the best, I don't know, phone photographer in the world. Mm -hmm. So I craft my image, I get it perfect, I get it exactly how I want, I start marketing to those people. Well, my daily rate's gonna be a lot different than if I was shooting locally, yeah. right? Because I've now got to fly to New York, I've got to fly to LA, mm -hmm. wherever they're making the phone, to photograph the phone, to mm -hmm. set it up, well, they might just ship it to me, right? So that, that my service is pretty good. If you're like, if you want to be the best plumber, obviously if you're on an island with five people, chances are you're not gonna make a good living, mm -hmm. right? So you got to increase your market size and market to the local islands, you know, and just go from there. I feel like that was the biggest thing for me. The biggest hurdle was overcoming was you're in Belleville yeah, and you can't do this. Having so many people tell me, like, I kid you not, probably about, like 80% of the people I, I talk that to. That could almost be like motivation. It, it, well, it was because I love proving people wrong, mm -hmm. right? So there's that part. And so like when they're sitting there saying this is not going to work, you need to go to Toronto. That stuff's done in New York. That stuff's done in Montreal. You don't do that in Belleville. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I bet you I can do it in Belleville and I will. I'll make it successful. Mm -hmm. And that's the driving force, right? So like have that in your mind. So who's the uh, question from? Oh, um, GKLC. So GKLC, uh, can just take that and run with it because that's you're you've got a superpower you've got no one watching you right now yeah it's actually easier when no one's watching you yeah because when people are watching you you start paying attention to everything yeah but at the beginning because no one's watching you you're make you completely your, free yeah you're completely free so make the best thing that you want to make whether it be a product or whether it be a service or whether it be whatever and just put it out there yeah. and then work on yeah, they have growing. to put it out there Yes. And like share it. Yeah. That's like a big thing. Yeah. There's a book called Show Your Work. Oh. And it's cool. amazing. It's a short book, really small, but it basically explains to people that if you don't show your work, no one will hire you for it. Yeah. And no one will find you. Yeah. And the crazy thing is too, is if you show your work in a specific way, you'll get hired for that thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like a nice little extra caveat there. So don't show weddings if you want to photograph like pets. Yeah. Show pets. Mm -hmm. you know, and make it simple for the client. Yeah. Clients don't have much time and they don't care. They want to just figure out what they want mm -hmm. and you have to make it clear, right? Yeah, like with websites, our web designer has tons of people ask her, can you make a site like XXL Scrunchie, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And even if she did make the exact same site, no one's going to go there because they're not marketing it. Like mm -hmm. they don't know just because you have this yep. doesn't mean you'll be successful. You, no. you have to put in the work. You have to put in the work and it has to be in front of the eyes that can. The people like, who can make those decisions. Yeah. yeah. And also I feel like the vulnerability is going to add to it, right? So by yeah. showing people and see, I'm just making arguments why I got to start working. Um, <laughs> showing edit back and be like, okay, fine. I'll do fine. It. Fine. I get it. It takes long enough to understand this stuff. Um, I feel like that at the beginning, you could really be quick to maneuver, yeah. right? Like if you're out there promoting pet portraits and then you turn around and you hate pet portraits, you can switch to whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I used to right? do like headshots. Yeah, so headshots, oh my God. Headshots, headshots are the headshots worst. Headshots in the condo lobby. Yeah. Yeah, and you set up and you shoot. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, but headshots, like if you love them, you love them. Like Peter Hurley is a guy in New York, adores doing that. And that's mm -hmm. all he does. And he does an amazing job, you know, like if- It was fun for a bit. Yeah. And, and then I was like, don't like it. Yeah, yeah. I've gone through a lot of different businesses doing that where I'm like, I just don't like it anymore. Yeah. When you find something you don't get bored of, hold on to that type. Yeah, because you can like, always really, change it. You can change it. You can make it into, if it's not working, it's something you're doing. It's not the market, it's something you're doing. Mm -hmm. So you have to change it. Because if you keep doing the same thing over and over and nothing's changing yeah it's not going to work right like if i go and put like out if you want to grow at least yeah exactly yeah sometimes it works out in your favor but yeah. for the most part if you're doing it for months on end and it's not changing switch up something it could be the yeah. way that you're approaching people it could be the way that you're not approaching people mm -hmm. or like not joining a social media channel oh my gosh yeah 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 <laughs> okay this is a really good question who's it from um day roan day <laughs> Money and time, I work a full-time job and still need to pay the bills and save up. So that's holding her back from starting her next thing or his or her thing. I love it. So I actually had that situation. I was working at a marketing company full-time. Mm -hmm. So yep. every Monday to Friday, eight to five. Yep. But I was also, my mural career was picking up. Mm -hmm. So after I got home from work, I would eat really quick and then I would work from that night till midnight mm -hmm. or make any time I could, like weekends, I yep. sacrificed to work on that, like drawing and reaching out mm -hmm. to clients and like building a, not a resume, but I was building like a- Portfolio. Yeah, to share yep. with them, to yep. give them an offer. Yeah, portfolio is just a, the portfolio is just a really fancy way of saying, this is what I can do. Yeah, like an right? artist portfolio. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like an artist resume or whatever. Yeah. I was doing that and like, it was so tiring, but it was worth it. Mm -hmm. 
because then I was able to leave the full-time job. Mm -hmm. So you like do what you have to do yep. and then you can choose what you want to do later. Yep. But There's, like you don't get it right away so, if you don't try. So to add into that is also knowing, <laughs> it's kind of knowing, knowing what, you want, kind what of. you want is key. Yeah. Right. So like you wouldn't have done the murals if you were kind of looking forward to it. You just wouldn't yeah. have done it. Right. The fact is you knew that you wanted to do it mm -hmm. and you drove into that like wholeheartedly. So I feel like yeah. when it talks about time and money, right, like obviously we all have set some amount of budget that you need to run your family or you know, whatever you're running. Yeah. So you can't you, just quit that. You can't just quit right that, away. right? So like for what I tell people is like, um, I use the term runway, which mm -hmm. is everyone should have a runway, whether you're working for someone or not working for someone. And having a runway is very powerful because it allows you to say no when you feel like saying no. Mm -hmm. And a runway is this, take six months to a year of your living expenses mm -hmm. and put that away. Put it in okay. easy accessible account, right? So it can be a savings account, it can be whatever, but it needs to be easy accessible within 24 hours. So if you need to draw it, mm -hmm. you can do. That allows you to say no to things. Allows you to say no to the job that you're currently working to pursue something else yeah. but you have a timeline at that point you only have a year mm -hmm. of not making any money before you're back to square one yeah so you got to be hard on yourself so that's always what i tell people and then i always tell people it's like look for inefficiencies in what you do to streamline potentially doing the thing that you want to do mm -hmm. so if you're working nine to five and there is a lot of different kind of things that are put on you that you could uh, add like to someone else's workload. Yeah. And what I mean is that it's kind of outsourcing so you get a VA to do stuff. Yeah. For example, you can actually crush your time. Mm -hmm. So you still got eight hours in your day, but now two hours of that day that you would spend kind of like doing market research, you've offloaded to someone, you're spending money on that, but now you can take that two hours and duplicate efforts and build out the thing that you want to build mm -hmm. and make some money doing that as well. Yeah. That's the other way of doing it. Yeah, just kind of... And like, I use this term so many times for like when I'm teaching people to kind of see beyond. And there's, there's, there's two, um, there's actually only two modes of living, right? There's the survival mode, which most people are in. Yeah. Which is day to day, got to pay the checks, got to do this, got to do that. But gotta on get the, to work, got to get home. Exactly, yeah. On the other side is the thrive. That is the, the moments where you don't have to think about the survival things. Mm -hmm. The biggest questions in life are in the thriving. It's a really hard spot to be in. A lot of people get to that spot and get freaked out and go back to survival mode because yeah. it's easier to deal with. I switch can, back to survival a lot. A lot. And everyone does. Like mm -hmm. Even the like, most successful people do because it's easy. Mm -hmm. Right. I need money to pay it's for food. Almost. I need money to pay for mortgage. You can just focus on those things and not think about it. In the thrive mode, it's asking you, who are you? Right. And that's a huge question. And like what will make you better? Or what is better? Yeah. What is better for you? And you may not even know yet. And you may get to that point. And that's why people often fill their lives with stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, if I only had a better car, right? if I only had a bigger house. But the reality is, is they're just hiding in that survival mode without being in their thrive mode. Yeah. Just so they can like, that's their end goal. And then yeah. once they reach it, then what? Yeah. Or they don't reach it. They don't reach they it. Well, they make it so hard to reach that They never reach it. Yeah. Right. When if they actually were in that thrive mode, not having to worry about survival. Now you have to ask those big questions, right? Like, what do I want to do with my life? Right. Like if someone stories like you hear the stories where people get like millions of dollars in the lottery and mm -hmm. lose it in two years. Yeah. It's because they just buy their way through their life. They don't stop and look and see how to live. Yeah. Big questions. Big questions. No. I yeah. like your YouTube. I like your Instagram audience. Right. Fear of being accepted and creating a niche. I feel like that was like almost our whole thought. That was the whole thought. Let's yeah, like <laughs> the whole podcast. If you've listened this far in the podcast, you know our thoughts on that. <laughs> Fear of failure. Fear of failure. That's a common one, eh? Fear, no money, broke, parents, yeah. constant disapproval. That's a hard one. Like as a parent, it, there's, there's layers to being a parent. Yeah. that you know it's, it's difficult because like on one end you want your kid to be successful and you want to do this and sometimes parents place upon their children their thought process and i can only speak for like my immediate like understanding of parenting right there's so many different layers to that that's kind of hard to get into yeah but i i think that when you have um when you have parents that have expectations on you Mm -hmm. that can be hard yeah and especially when they're like oh you're going to be the world's best doctor or whatever yeah right? and their and their entire used being to want me to be doctors. did they yeah yeah so they wanted you they knew at the time so they wanted you knew. to be a doctor yes and then you decided you wanted to be a an web artist. designer an artist but then that is the I worst thing parents hearing that like oh my god yeah fuck. i didn't pursue it because yeah, it's like, of that yeah it's like you sit there and you're like how the hell are you going to make a living how are you going to sell paintings on the street yeah yeah exactly you're going to be that person sitting on the, the, the um, under the eiffel tower and just like painting something and getting two bucks for it yeah right that's what immediately springs to mind as an artist and that it's honestly the hardest thing right so like my daughter just got accepted into the arts program at centennial 
Okay. So she's super excited and she wants to have this life of an artist and she wants to build stuff. And I said to her, I'm like, you know, when COVID's done, come out and chat to Tina, Aww. right? And, and talk to her on what it looks like to build a business around your art form, mm -hmm. right? Because she hears it from me all the time. She sees me doing it and she's like, yeah, it's dead, mm -hmm. right? Hearing it from another adult is really key. So I feel like in, in this person's place is communication is always key, right? And explaining to the parents, right? And then you probably sat down with your parents and said, listen, I don't want to be a doctor. I want to do this, you know? No, I actually just went you to school just went for into, psychology. You just went, okay. <laughs> I followed through. I tried. You followed. You tried because you wanted I their approval. After, yeah, because you wanted them to be it was happy. The only way, like I gave up on the dream. Yeah. temporarily. I feel like as a parent, it's really powerful to see your child take ownership of their life, mm -hmm. whether it's a good thing or a bad thing in your mind. Yeah still doesn't change the fact that taking ownership of your life and saying this is what I'm going to do with it shows a direction and I feel like that's what we want our children we want them to be productive little members of society yeah you know and you know to not be jackasses that's mm -hmm. all we want yeah right so and like some parents go to the extreme where they're like I wanted to you be a doctor to to this school and yeah because I wanted to be a doctor and I didn't get the chance so I'm giving you that chance but that's not yeah. fair because that's their yeah. dream you're living on their dream I feel like explaining to parents, like, I know you want me to do this, but this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I want to do. And here's my plan on how to do it. Yeah. Don't, if, I always tell people, never show up to an argument without knowing the answer to the argument. Mm -hmm. Right? If you're going to tell me that you don't want to do something, you better damn well have a reason why you're not doing it. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't want to do it this way because it doesn't make sense. If we did it this way, it makes more sense. That's far more powerful than coming in with a no. Because a yeah. no opens up an argument versus a discussion. Mm -hmm. Right? Argument's never successful. Yeah. The same with mural clients, how I started mm -hmm. booking so many after and got more confident is I actually just showed them a rough sketch of what yep. I could do for them. Yeah. Instead of being like, hey, I could paint a mural, but yeah. I visually show yeah. them. And then if you'd continued down that path, you would have got to the part where that section would have almost been redundant mm -hmm. because they know you do a good job. Yeah. And so you would have just sat there and said, listen, here's my last few clients. Mm -hmm. You can chat to them if you want. I would love to do a mural in the style of like some flowers and this, in this kind of styling and just from like a pin board yeah. and then good to go. Mm -hmm. That's all I do with my clients now is they literally sit there and style board stuff out. Yeah. I used to sketch stuff out, I used to do all of that. And yeah. you get to the point where you're just so confident, you're like, I know I can do this. Yeah. This is what we're doing. You know, and then that's, that's a good and nice place to be. Cause then you mm -hmm. just, and then you start thinking about, oh, what can I add into this? What can I make different? What can I build? And yeah. here we are. I know. I miss that. Yeah. You'll get there again. Um, lots of fear. Mm -hmm. Has XXL ever failed in something? Seems like everything is successful. So this goes back to like when, you know, remember when I said to you like, oh, I just look People and I see a posting. perfect, yes. I feel like that's, so we talked about bragging, but I also mm -hmm. feel like we need to talk about the unwanted side effect of being consistent, mm -hmm. right? What they're seeing is consistency versus good, right? Because you've done this long enough that you've naturally got good at it yes. because you've been consistent at it. But they weren't really here at the beginning. Exactly. Where, and they yeah. don't remember yeah. like the bad audio yeah, exactly. or stuff like that. Yeah. I feel like that's, I feel most people latch onto things when they're already good. Yeah. They don't remember the bad, it no. seems. And that's kind of like. And it's easy to not post the bad. Like, yeah. Obviously, I don't post when I All right, okay. ship so, wrong. So here's, so here's a nice thing for your, for your who's the uh, who's the question from? Um, Mon Mon BLE. Okay. So Mon Mon. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I don't know their real name. I know, Mon Mon Bieli. Um, so can you give Mon Mon like three things that you messed up on in recent history mm -hmm. without like having to think too hard about it? Um, I forgot to like order this one fabric that I needed and okay. then I had to order it again and yeah. then I had to pay extra shipping charges. Yep, that's a pretty big business error, mm -hmm. right? Because that can be like a slowdown that in production. That adds, adds a lot of unnecessary bills. Well, in, in aggregate too, it can slow down multiple sectors of your business. Yes, Not just and then we're like sold section. out of that product exactly, for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, that's happened. Yeah. Um, my website. So I wanted to add these like product bundles to the site and yep. then I inserted a bunch of code and it actually ruined the website for a day. Like this oh, one no. customer is like, there's three different prices I'm looking at. So that looks so bad because my Cause, site is our world. Yeah. That and, is and that's, and that's your, the core. That's your public face, right? That's your public face that. and medium. Yeah. I would yeah. delete everything, but yeah. I need the site yeah, or like else it, we don't have, we can't make money. No. So I was mortified. So I had to remove that code and I made a duplicate of the site. So I just yep. reverted it back luckily. Yep. But that was stressful. Did you backups now? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see my post this morning? Yeah, I saw that too. And I was like, yep, back up. 
Backup, yeah. Like I have a server. Like I kid you not, like it's a bona fide server that basically oh. has eight hard drives in it. Whoa. Yeah. And so we literally have close to 50 terabits of data. Yeah. RAID 6 is basically multiple times from it's what my friend tells me. It's like, it's copied so many times. If I pull one of those hard drives today, it knows what it is. And then when I put another hard drive in, it will copy back that data. Oh, that's cool. You can't lose, I think I can lose two hard drives at a time mm -hmm. before I start losing data. Okay. So that's kind of, because it's all crossed over all of the drives. Um, the reason I did that is because <laughs> I had a wedding corrupt on a card oh, and corrupt on a hard drive scary. it was the most frightening thing i've ever done in my career like well done i didn't do it i got home i offloaded the files As you something would. happened in the offload it's weird like how does that happen i don't know like you just there's a gremlin in my computer i swear it just does that right so that like, messed up would it be? yeah and so but you know, people look at me now and they're like, well, you're, you've got your shit together because you know how to back up. It's like, dude, I literally spent all of Monday sorting my backups because they were so badly organized and I need them to be organized to do yeah. what I have to do. Mm -hmm. So like mistakes happen and we'll show them, but it doesn't always look like an act. It doesn't look like a mistake because we're showing them. Yeah. Right. And especially with the consistency that people are posting, they may turn around and go, you know, they're so good at it. They got it. Yeah. They don't mess up. We mess up all the time. All the time. And, and you even see it, but it may not look like a mess up because the reality is, is we often will inflate our own problems mm -hmm. to be much bigger than they actually are. Right. Yeah. When if, you know, if I saw you post and be like, oh, I forgot to order materials, I wouldn't have thought twice about it. I'm like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. You know, but carry on. You know, but to you, that was a big deal. Yeah. Because it will still happen again, I'm sure. And it was still <laughs> happened multiple times last year. Because we just, we're human. Yeah. We're all human. We're not perfect. No. And I, I feel we like. can't be. I feel like this kind of stuff often, the reason we want to share is to show who we are and yeah. that we are just normal people and we all make mistakes and all that. But I feel like because we do that, we often have the ability to edit and that can yeah. sometimes come off as like, get your shit together. Yeah. Of course. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone makes mistakes. Yeah. And another mistake I made, I think I forgot. The third one, yeah. Um, what was it? <laughs> oh, Black Friday. Okay, so suddenly we had over a thousand orders and I didn't have the proper team scheduled in because I didn't think we'd have that many orders. Mm -hmm. So I didn't vlog the whole thing because I had to literally work like every day to pack to mm -hmm. make sure orders got out in time. But that was like a failure on my behalf because I overworked myself, but I could have scheduled people in properly and I could have hired someone sooner. Yeah. So that was a big mistake. Yeah. Now, was that a mistake that could have been avoided or you just... Avoided. Yeah. No. Yeah. You got but too I, busy? Yeah. But yeah. I didn't, like, I didn't think we'd have that many orders. No. So it's also like, then there's another mistake. You could hire someone next year and get less orders. Yeah. And now you've got that extra person. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of hard. So. I know. Um, I like the money. I like the money ones. That's a, that's already hard on because like... Yeah, money fear. Money, money fears. So I have a really nice um, way of explaining fear. So fear is often false evidence appearing real. Oh. Right? It's a good one. It's, and it's honestly one of my favorite ways of kind of like presenting it to myself mm -hmm. as I spend like two hours talking to you about how I'm being a chicken on starting something because I'm fearful of it. Fully aware of it, but just embracing it is key. Um, money is really, really hard because everyone has different budgets, yeah. right? And so your budget is vastly different to mine. And we all and vice live versa. in different Yeah, we all like live places. in different places. Yeah, so like the budget in New York is going to be a lot different than in L.A., yeah. Even though they're both cities, they're going to be different budgets, right? And I know, like, from LA to London, right? Or Toronto. Like, Toronto is one of the most expensive places to live now. Yeah. Which is crazy because it's Toronto. Mm -hmm. You know? But I feel like if you get consumed with that fear, everything becomes a problem about that it's fear. It's all you think about. It's all you think about. Yeah. So, breaking loose of that cycle, right? The first things first, I always tell people is like, if you want to get back on track, so here are the steps. First off, it's easier to make money than to save money. Yes. But at the same time, if there are things that you can save money on that are easy, do it, right? If you've got Netflix going and you can barely afford to keep the lights on, get rid of Netflix. Mm -hmm. It sucks. Make your own entertainment up and you're going to have to deal with it, right? Yeah. Buy it or rent a book from the library, yeah. which people don't like to hear, right? Cell phones, these are privileges. Yeah. So if you want this privilege, use it to generate something, right? Build your content on it. Make your, your, your ideas known, right? Spend some time understanding what it takes to make your life run financially and then add a buffer of 20%. Mm -hmm. Until you get there, only focus on that. You want to have more money coming in than going out. Yeah. And that's like financial 101, right? And we're not even talking about savings, we're not talking about all of that fun stuff in retirement. That's a whole new thing. Oh, my contractor's calling me. Thank you. Do you want okay. to pick up? Hello? Yeah. See ya. <laughs> Does he do uh, uh, ice fishing? Yes. Yeah. He's obsessed. Do you? No, I've. Uh, 
Got an unrational fear of the uh, walking ice? on ice, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Because I like I grew up in countries that we didn't get cold, and it's like you go oh, over yeah. here, and it's like so I'm getting better at it. It's like walking on ice is is definitely like we did a, sh a shoot for the city um, in the middle of January, mm -hmm. and I stood on some ice there, and I was like felt pretty brave. So it was pretty good, yeah. But I remember I had to do one ice fishing shoot, and I had the. Uh, the the production company like they gave me a float suit which is basically it floats <gasps> if you drop into the water oh my gosh which i was like oh, i'll wear that yeah so i was yeah. like bulky i didn't care what i look like i look yeah. like they're probably a michelin man everyone else is looking oh, at me so like fun. yeah growing up in uh, england and then moving to france and then coming to canada has been a, a wild ride so wow yeah. that's a fun like past yeah it's fun i like i honestly like it's funny because like having lived in different countries you get to see different perspectives yeah and you ways also of life yeah, but you also notice that people are always the same. Like people are always the same. I don't think I've seen a different populace. Oh really? You know? Yeah, they're just they're everyone wants you know, <laughs> we're pretty simple people. Like we want to be understood, we want to be loved, and just be able to do what we, we enjoy. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then when people put blockers in the way, that's when you start seeing deviant behavior. But other than that, it's you know. Yeah. yeah. You want to pick like our last question? Yeah, last question. All right, so we'll just do a I good old this. Russian. Hi. Oh, here we go. Actually, we've got two here. I'm gonna take two. Okay. So we're going to start with Jacob Chankov. Hello, Tina. I don't know if I should get the LLC or corporation. Which one would you recommend? Oh, I always stay away from those questions because, like, I'm not a. So accountant. I feel like the best thing is to talk to an accountant. I always like they always ask, "What's your biggest regret?" And so I'm like, not going to an accountant. Is, I feel like this is yeah. So accountant for, for you're obviously in business. So like an accountant at this point is really key because they'll guide earlier you. Earlier to get advice because exactly, I got yeah. advice, I could have saved so, so much. So much money. Yeah. Like, like I. I incorporated, which is like I and K. Way late. So I did it too early. Oh. Which is the opposite problem. So yeah. I was paying too much when it could have started later. Yeah. But then you would have paid too much if you started later anyway. So yeah. I know. Yeah, like so it's kind of like this weird mix. So like I've I'm incorporated, which is kind of the same as the American LLC. Yeah. From what I can understand. And yeah. for businesses, there's like a threshold between personal income and business income that makes sense to go to an LLC or yeah. a corporation. That is when it makes sense to do it. If you do it too early, it can be quite costly. Yeah. If you do it too late, it can be too costly. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's not a bad question to ask, but it does need to be asked to an accountant or yeah. CPA, I think they're called over there. I don't know. Or is that over here? I call mine an accountant. Yeah, an accountant, yeah. So like, talk to your accountant. There's CPAs, yeah. If you don't have an accountant, get an accountant. They're, Just look on Google. Yeah, you're going to be using a lawyer because it's basically a legal entity. Yeah, or they're, they could get one for you. Yeah, exactly. And they'll guide you through that. Yeah, so. so get an accountant. And like over in Canada, it costs like about a thousand bucks to get incorporated when I did it. It might be more oh, now, yeah. it might be less. I think it does. Yeah. I forget. It's around there. So it's going to cost a bit, but just sink it into your expenses. Yeah. And there's lots of benefits of being incorporated yes. after you yes. get incorporated. Yeah. Like people can't sue you. <laughs> people can't sue you. It's not you. It's your company. Mm -hmm. um, you pull dividends. You're not basically, you know. Or you're on salary. Or, or you're on salary. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I'm at a dividend stage right now. So, oh, because we have a small company, right? So we don't need to scale massively yet. Mm -hmm. Should we, we'll pull another question for the last one. Okay, you pull it. Okay. Oh, actually, now I found a good one there. Mental health and especially a room for myself. And I what? feel especially room for myself. I feel like that's just answering like mental health and running a business. entrepreneurship. Yeah, it's tough sometimes. It's real tough. Especially when you have to say no to things because then your friendships get affected and yep. then you think everyone hates you or at least I thought that. No, I'm, yeah, I can, I can totally, everyone, I've been through that, yeah. Everyone, feel, you think everyone hates you for doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Even like your really good friends that yep. say they support you but they, you think they don't now yeah. because it of It becomes that one, a really hard, it's a, not it's everyone, a lonely thing, right? Yes. Right? There's no one to, like in, at work you can... And you're not ignoring them. Like no. if they reached out you would happily answer them but you're yeah. just not reaching out because you have to put like you're building something yeah like exactly busy. yeah and it's like people will say it's priorities but it's not it's not a problem because you don't prioritize your business over them it's just a case of there's only right a now, certain amount of time yeah right so you can only give a certain amount and i feel like being an entrepreneur is learning how much you actually give like as mm -hmm. a as a as a worker or as an employee you can give 100 percent right or what you think is 100 percent yeah right and there's a big there's a big difference there but i feel like as an entrepreneur or as a you know, you know creator even like you will have 
this roller coaster that if you don't have your mental health like constantly in your mind it can affect you yeah. like we mentioned earlier that i run like that's my meditation mm -hmm. right if you can't run if you you know if you can get some time to yourself or build that place talk to someone yeah i'll talk to someone have someone that's like your go-to bounce off right like have someone that you can talk to like a lot of people i know have got connected over whatsapp or mm -hmm. discord or like um we'll see if one there what's the boomer discord <laughs> Slack, like oh. there's there's so many things out there that you can build like-minded groups. Mm -hmm. right? These groups are going to be core of growth because they're going to be the ones that say, yeah, that's a great idea. Or I've done this. I made that mistake. Let me save you that mistake and go to this. And you can have that core group of people that are going to help you mentally. Or even just listen to you. Because yeah. you can't hold it all in yourself. No, like, no. You can't build something alone. It's hard to explain to people who work as employees. Yes. Problems that you have because the problem set that you have is so unique. And they don't see what you go through every day. No. They think they have this expectation of you mm -hmm. to like live up to that they don't yep. talk they don't even tell you about it yep. and then they get mad at you for it yeah well freelancing is all about freelancing entrepreneurship kind of fall into the same category you are building a parachute on your way down yeah <laughs> Yeah, oh my God. Right? Like if you're a worker, you get given a parachute and then they push you off the cliff. Yeah. Right? You know how you're going to fall. You know when the parachute's going to pop. You don't as a, as a freelancer. Yeah, this is or like our entrepreneur. everything. Yeah. Like if this burned to the ground. Like that. So like yeah. if you, so if you went to don't the doctor. No, no, but let's, let's do, I'm going to do a, a thought. We're going to do a thought exercise here. Okay. So you go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. He tells you that running this business is bad for your heart and you can only dedicate one hour per week to this job. That'd be crazy. How would you do it though? I think I would just, like, if I had to do that now, yeah. I would delegate all the tasks in that okay. one hour yep. to make sure things get done because I can't. Yeah. What would I do in that hour? Yeah, that's it. That's all the stress you're allowed to do. That's it. You just delegate. So you kind of... To know things would get done until yeah. the next week when I can work that hour. Yeah. So like, but you would manage to do it somehow because yeah. you've built that mindset and that understanding and that mental health that's required mm -hmm. to be kind of a little bit, you're kind of like the fighter that just keeps getting up, right? You keep getting smack, 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 but then you just keep getting up, right? Like, um... What's his name? Oh, the actor who played Rocky. He um, he said being tough isn't oh. about how hard you can hit, it's how many hard hits you can take. Yes. Right? And I believe that's the same for entrepreneurs and artists, right? It's like, you're going to go through some rough times. Mm -hmm. And in fact, those rough times have formed who I am today. And I'm not always happy with how I've had to learn the lessons, but yeah. I've learned the lessons. Same yeah, as you've done. Yeah, but you're learning. Yeah. yeah, so I think like mental health wise, like being able to have that time to kind of sort that stuff is key. Mm -hmm. And then right? sometimes it's okay to be sad or just feel what you're feeling. Yeah. And then yeah. with time, it will get better. Yeah, time's the uh, ultimate. So, yeah, just as long as you still like what you're doing. Yeah, I feel like okay. if you get to the point where you hate what you're doing, get out. Yeah. Right? Like you see all those people that are like, why did he sell that company? And it's like, it just, he built he it up to a point to. and he didn't want to be there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. It's like, go on and build something else. Mm hmm. That was good. I know. Hi, Courtney. Hi. What perfect timing. Mm-hmm.